This is who we are. 25 storytellers tell 26 stories of the past, present, and future of Eastern Illinois University. It's EIU. This is who we are. Join us tonight at 7 o'clock on WEIU. Keeps going back to Nashville. Hi, Ray Stevens here inviting you to join me and the legendary blues man Sam Moore right here on Ray Stevens Cabaret Nashville. I'm a soul man. Oh, I'm a soul man. The only way you'll get the blues is if you miss this show. CC Rider, just see what you have done. Oh, yeah. Join us Friday at 7 o'clock on WEIU. Next time at the Corner of Entertainment, State and Water. You, there in the dark. Althea Grace performs. Althea Grace is at the Corner of Entertainment, State and Water. Be watching Friday at 7.30 on WEIU. Coming up on Austin City Limits. Be watching Friday at 8 on WEIU. On the next Infinity Hall Live, Snarky Puppy. I believe in the music and I believe in my friends. The end goal is like a serious pot of gold, which is that if you can become successful doing the thing that you love, then you're kind of the happiest person in the world because all that anyone will ever ask of you is to be yourself. Infinity Hall Live, great music, pure and simple. Join us Friday at 9 o'clock on WEIU. Serving Decatur, Springfield, and Taylorville, WEIU, where you can watch, listen, and learn. Johnson, and we are so excited about this program tonight. We are sharing EIU, This Is Who We Are, with the world tonight because we have 26 awesome stories to share with you. We started this pro we started working on this program about five months ago, and we have had so many people say, why did you wait this long to do a story on, pro on Eastern? Well, it's time. It's so. time. We're not waiting any longer. We have lots of stories to mm -hmm. share with you tonight. We're going to be here throughout the evening. We've got phone operators behind us. We've got a house full of people Woo! in here. We're going to party all night long, celebrate EIU. Yes, and along with that, if you want to call in and get your very own copy of the program, for $75, you can get one. If you want two or more, it's, they're $60 each. That's why the phone operators are here. That's why we're here tonight, to show you EIU, this is who we are. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. EIU, this, this is who we are. <laughs> EIU, This Is Who We Are, is brought to you in part by 
The Eastern Illinois University Alumni Association is dedicated to serving the needs of our graduates while providing support to the university. The Eastern Illinois University Alumni Association is proud to support Eastern Illinois University, this is who we are. Eastern Illinois University, This Is Who We Are was made in part from a grant from the Charleston Area Charitable Foundation. At First Mid, we strive to fulfill the financial needs of our communities with personal service, professionalism, and integrity. Headquartered in Mattoon and dedicated to the needs of our customers, First Mid is proud to sponsor Eastern Illinois University, This Is Who We Are. Sarah Bush Lincoln congratulates the storytellers and the EIU champions on their dedication to Eastern Illinois University. Proud to be a part of EIU, this is who we are. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care. Additional funding was provided by Monahan Partners of Arcola, City of Mattoon Tourism, Ross and Cindy McCullough, and former Illinois Governor Jim Edgar. Hello, I'm Dr. David Glassman, President of Eastern Illinois University, and I want to welcome you to our program, EIU, This Is Who We Are. During the course of the program, you'll hear from a number of individuals talking about our amazing university. Well, welcome to the program, and once again, EIU, This Is Who We Are. you really cannot do a history of Eastern Illinois University or the city of Charleston or the community without doing something about on the Livingston Lord Administration Building, also known as the Castle, also known as Old Main. You know, Old Main was the very first building that was ever built on the campus of Eastern Illinois University. And the cornerstone was laid on May 27, 1896. Governor Altgelt came down, who was the governor of Illinois at the time, came down for the ceremony. There were over 15,000 people who were here for the ceremony. Originally, they had $88,000 scheduled to build the building. I think it ended up costing somewhere around $100,000. This was the first building of uh, Bishop's Woods, uh, the 40-acre plot that the uh, state of Illinois purchased. And uh, behind Old Main was a lake. And I'd like to be able to say the name, but I can't pronounce it. So I think it's Lake Alamoena. Why a castle? Governor Altgelt at the time really, I think, thought that every university needed a castle. And so there was one on Illinois State's campus, one on Southern's, one on Northern's. And in fact, the one on Northern's campus was very similar to the original design of the way that that the Old Main uh, was supposed to be. And uh, I'd often heard the rumor that it was supposed to be a castle on the Rhine because the governor, Governor Altgelt, believed that the European higher education system, especially the German system, was one of the best in the world. And he wanted to have something to remind everyone about the castle on the Rhine. And consequently, I always say, if you take a look at Old Main, you'll see that one turret is taller than the other. And people ask the question, why is that? And the reason is, is in the castles in Germany, that is where you would put your best archer. The building uh, housed everything. It housed, and it's, it's six stories, by the way, and, and people don't understand that because only three stories are currently occupied. But it housed the gymnasium which the best that we can figure was on the sixth floor, which is currently closed. It had a classroom, it had or several classrooms. It had the health service, which was a nurse. It had the library, it had the chapel. Everything was enclosed in that building. And I remember my first visit coming here, coming down Route 16 and looking into the distance and seeing the castle. And even before, I, even before, I made my first step foot on the campus. I saw that and I said, I think I really want to come here because it is a symbol of the university. It's just, it's a great building, the tradition of the university. When you walk in there, it's just, it's amazing. We're gonna bring the energy all night. 
Let's let's kick it off right now. Eastern Illinois University. This is my home away from home. It means so much to me, and it can mean so much to you. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, do I see myself working at EIU, I probably would have laughed at you. But now, five years later, I'm still here at this institution. I still work for the students, and I still love what I do. Huh, you can't beat that. It's the best feeling in the world here at EIU. After I graduated from EIU, I worked at another institution up north, closer to home, and I really learned about the profession. So I fell in love with the profession of higher education, also admissions, being on the road, recruiting students. And then once I had the opportunity to come back to EIU, I felt it was just perfect for me because I, have to, I get to go to the institution that I love with a profession that I love. And I always tell students, if you find a job that you love, you'll never work a day for the rest of your life. And every day here at EIU, I'm never working. At the end of the day, I think I just do it for the students. I love EIU. EIU has done a lot for me. It's really helped me grow as a young professional. And I think to just give back to the institution, that's just the best thing that we can do. And I think students see that. And if you can reach one, you can teach one. And they can pay it for it later on once they graduate and they can give back to our university. I want students to see me on campus, you know, because I want to realize that as a faculty member, as a staff member, we're always going to be here for our students. EIU! It's an honor uh, to be known as Mr. EIU or Bleeding Blue 24-7. Just having the opportunity to represent my campus in a positive life is all I want to do. And I think students really appreciate that. And then that I bleed blue, I'm also trying to help you at the end of the day. You know, I am so grateful to Eastern. Um, because of Eastern, I've had the life that I've had. Um, I came here as a student and then I had the opportunity to come back and work as a faculty member and in varied other positions and I just owe Eastern my whole life. When I first came back to, to campus as a faculty member, there weren't a lot of women faculty members on campus, but because there weren't a lot of women on campus, we kind of sought each other out. Uh, that was the time when women's studies program first began in, in the early, the mid-70s. And also we were seeking out mentors on campus and there were some very strong women who became mentors for young faculty members like myself. Uh, Dr. Shirley Moore and Dr. Jeannie Lenahan were strong mentors coming out of the psychology department and they were very active on campus. My personal mentor was Dr. Barbara Hill, who at that time was Dr. Barbara Owen. Um, I watched her, she was a, f a department chair and then she became a dean and then she moved into the provost role and I watched how she worked and I looked at how she spoke to people and how she managed herself and that became my gold standard for how to, to behave as a faculty member and then ultimately a department chair. You can't be here for 34 years and not see some changes on campus and I got to see a lot of changes on campus. Uh, Greek court was built, uh, the student rec center was built. We also saw the renovation of the library and for a couple of years, the library totally sat in McAfee Gym as that whole building was renovated and it's just one of the stunning places on campus. You may not know that the way that, the reason that walkway is uh, linking Coleman Hall to the College of Business is because the, the state wasn't allowing new buildings to be built, but they could renovate buildings. So this was the renovation of Coleman Hall was the building of the, the College of Business. And then, of course, there was the building of the Dowden of Fine Arts Center, which was a big job and has resulted in a beautiful place on our campus. But the one thing that hasn't changed at Eastern all these years is the dedication and the commitment to students. Um, that was there when I was a student, and it certainly was, is there now. And I don't think 
any renovation showed that more than the time that, that Blair Hall had to be renovated. Um, Blair Hall caught on fire, uh, faculty lost all their materials, the, the building didn't burn down but it had suffered such extensive smoke and water damage that it had, could not be used. That happened on a day when President Hankin, Provost Lord, Vice President Cooley and I were all in Springfield testifying in front of a Senate Appropriations Committee. Our cell phones all went off at the same time. We got the call to come back. And one of the last things that, um, that the President said is he decided to stay in Springfield and he sent Jeff Cooley and I back was make sure the students are taken care of. And you know what, this whole campus came together. And within 48 hours after that fire, Every student had a new classroom to get into. There were chairs in those classrooms. They were equipped for the faculty. And it happened, the whole campus jumped in to make sure that that, that worked. And I just think how grateful we were. That, that that was the feeling of the campus. We can't disrupt the student's educational environment. We've got to keep it going. Um, and again, I experienced that as a student when I was here. And I experienced that as a faculty member here. The students were always at the center of all decisions were made. That's the reason we are here at Eastern, is to take care of our students. And um, that we care about them personally, we care about them professionally. And when I was vice president, we had the opportunity to go out and talk to alums across the country. And that's what they remember about Eastern. They may not remember a specific class, but they sure remember their faculty and ask questions about what happened to their faculty and they talk about how this feels like it's home for them when they come back. No matter where they are across the country, they like to come home to Eastern. In the early part of the 1900s, um, students started creating scrapbooks, personal scrapbooks that were autographed by one another. And it was to have a recording of their year. This is who we were, this is what we looked like, these were the classes we attended, these were the clubs we joined. And a kind of permanent first year book started in 1913. And it was called The Whopper, and it was printed in downtown Charleston by Prather the Printer. After that first year, um, it ceased. And um, the, it wasn't until 1919 that a group of students resurrected a yearbook and they named it the Warbler after the thousands of birds that appeared in the lake that was right behind the old main, the, the castle, <laughs> and uh, which is no more and there are no more warblers around but the students have retained that name and I think it's important to understand that because yearbooks are nothing if not tradition. So they record the years as they go by but they appreciate and understand the history and traditions of the school so they would not dream of renaming the yearbook. Um, in fact, in those early years, it used to be called Working on the Bird. Those early yearbooks were um, what we today would call like paperbacks. They were loosely bound, but full of photographs, mostly of the buildings um, on campus. So we have a great history of what the school looked like at that time by looking at those books. We have a wonderful collection of faculty because now we see, you know, who Miss Booth was. We see who Miss all all of the buildings that are named after actual people are in those early books because they were the beloved teachers of our, of our students. Um, at that time there were a lot of literary societies so that took up the the most part of the book, the clubs that the, the students joined, and of course athletics. Um, so that was, that was the early books. Still lots of room for autographs and you'll see if you look at old books that students have signed each other's and the faculty signed books too. Times have changed so we see that early presidents um, were saying we should have dances for the students. And some people said, oh no, that's terrible, you shouldn't have to dance. But it's all documented in these books. Through the decades, um, you really see how the world affected our campus. So whether it was World War I, whether it was the Depression, how all of those things influenced the students um, when they lost their beloved you know, um, students to war or faculty or um, how the depression hit and, and the things that they had to scrimp and say when we, when we got new buildings on campus. Everything that happened is documented in these books. It's written in the student's voice, so it's what was important to them. So we see things on fashion. We think, that, you know, um, wonderful, oh, the 70s are really funny, you know, with the, hot, with the big platform shoes. And then you see technology, how that's in, when, when we get our first radio station or when we get our, whatever we get, it's documented in those books. 
And again, every time you see those stories told, um, it's also in reverence to the school. They love their school. Even if something is bad, they love their school. In the early years, there, was, there were a string of advisors who were basically class sponsors. A man named Franklin Andrews, for whom Andrews Hall is named after, um, was perhaps the first big advisor who was beloved by his students. And he brought a degree of excellence with him. He taught them how to do journalism, he had uh, standards, and the yearbook really thrived during that period because um, he held them accountable. There were other, other, a lot of other advisors, but I will say Daniel Thornburg um, came in 1959, and he is equally beloved. And the yearbook has, in fact, over the years, won myriad awards, um, including during Mr. Andrews' time, um, winning what they called All-American at that time through the Associated Collegiate Press. The students are students are students are students. Um, it's just how, how the decades have changed and how the world around them changes to influence who they are. Um, so the yearbooks themselves don't change that much and it really is this kind of living history of who we are. Wonderful story. We are having so much fun here in the studio, and we thank you at home. We hope that you are enjoying the program and enjoying it as well. We just opened the show with four different stories. We have former President Lou Hinken right over here. We had um, Omar Solomon bleed blue. How oh could gosh. you not after you heard that story? He's the ball of fire. He is. Definitely. And um, Vice President Jill mm -hmm. Nielsen and then Sally. We're going to talk to her in just a moment as well. So we need them to do what? We need you to call right now. If you've enjoyed this program so far, mm -hmm. then we would love for you to give back yeah. to WEIU TV. <laughs> That's the, what we like to hear. So for a $75 gift to WEIU EIU, we'd love to send you a DVD of the program you're currently watching. And if you'd like two or more, you can get them for $60 each. The phone operators are sitting here waiting for you to call. This break, we'd like to get 10 people to call in. So if you love this program and put value on WEIU and us doing the production, we need you to call right now. And uh, over to Kian. Hey, Sally. How are you Hi. doing tonight? Oh, great. This is a wonderful atmosphere. We've got Sally Renaud here, and she's with the Department of Journalism. Mm -hmm. And um, she's offer she's here to answer your phone calls tonight. But Absolutely, she, call in. She just celebrated something very special. Why don't you tell us about that? Real sure. Quick. This happened at such a great time. Just Saturday, we had alumni back to welcome. Um, the current staff as well, but to celebrate 100 years of the Warbler, they brought back their books, they talked about what a difference the yearbook had made in their lives and how they learned leadership, and it was just a phenomenal event, really wonderful. Absolutely, and let me tell you something, we could not have produced this program without the Warbler, is that not true, Jaina? Let's That's talk right. about that. The Warbler came in so handy throughout all of this, and we couldn't be more happy to be a part of this show tonight with you. Thank you for being Absolutely, here Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. Jaina, over to you. The Warbler was a, a great resource for us, and I don't know how many Warblers I look through, but when I think about this, this program, we could not have done it without them. So we are happy that we were able to do that. I wanted to talk a little bit about this DVD right here. We've got a copy of it right here, mm -hmm. and it's EIU This Is Who We Are. On the back is a list of all the storytellers, all the stories, and all of our underwriters. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have produced this program without all the underwriters as well. So there it is right there. You can see it right on the screen. You have your very own copy. One copy is $75. Two or more is $60 each. So be sure to give us a call tonight. The phone operators are standing by, and I think Jane is going to talk to one of them right now. Who do you got over there, Jane? I sure am. This is Lou Hink, and he's a past president of Eastern Illinois University, and you were our first storyteller. I was. So you watched the premiere last week of EIU, This Is Who We Are. Did you learn anything? I, I actually learned a lot. And, you know, I've been on campus for 51 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be able to say that I learned some things, First of which, I did not realize that there was another dog besides Napoleon. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed hearing that story, and that's what you're going to hear later on. So folks, keep, keep <laughs> watching. But before you watch, call, call. Because, uh, you know, WEIU, public broadcasting, needs the money. Thank you very much, Lou. Well, that is exactly right. That's right. So the other thing that I did learn, I, I did have the opportunity to see, interestingly enough, when Dr. Nielsen was talking about the fire in Blair Hall, mm -hmm. uh, that's the first time I actually was able to see video production of that. Wow. I mean, I, I saw pictures, but we were actually in Springfield getting ready to testify before mm -hmm. a Senate committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we received a phone call saying Blair was on fire. Two people came back. We stayed to testify. The, the senator said, 
And now the president is leaving to literally put out a fire on the Eastern's campus. Wow. And so I came back, but when we came back here, the fire was basically out. Mm -hmm. And this was the opportunity to see exactly what other people saw when they were here. People all came together. And I remember that day very vividly. And it was uh, just, it was scary. And we were, we were glad that everybody, nobody was hurt. And right. we're glad that you all were there. Yep. Well, let me tell you something, Lou. Do you uh -huh. know where that video came from? It came right from us, from our news watch crew. You, yes. So we're happy that we were able to provide that. Very good. So the phones are silent. Okay. Oh, not we do anymore. not like when good the phones job. are silent. It's so important that you call because we could not put together a program like this without our underwriting and our support from our viewers. So if you are an Eastern alum, mm -hmm. if you have an Eastern uh, student in living in your home, if you've had a grandchild that's an Eastern yeah. student, or if you just love Eastern, we want you to call tonight. We do want you to call. Do we yeah, we do have we a thank couple you? people to thank. Okay. Absolutely. We'd like to thank Cheryl from Charleston. Uh, she was helping with the phones earlier. And we'd like to thank Martha from Charleston. And Gretchen, who was mm -hmm. one of our storytellers from Peoria. Thank you, Gretchen, for calling. A lot of our storytellers are not from here. So no. they're watching online tonight. So hello to all of our storytellers that are watching. Yes, all over the world. And we want to remind you again, we're streaming online. If you visit our website, weiu.net, there are social media links up in the top right hand corner. We have Facebook, YouTube, and online. And one more thing about Facebook, if you visit our Facebook page, please join the group, EIU This Is Who We Are, because we can only share so many stories this evening, but we want to extend the stories on Facebook. So when once you join that group, you can tell your story and share your story about EIU. And people are already using it and telling stories, which that's exactly what the page is intended for. Mm -hmm. We could only do 26 stories this time around, yes. so we know there's a bunch more stories. So that. many to mm -hmm. tell, but we have great stories coming your way tonight. I think in the next break, we're going to hear from Ross McCullough, mm -hmm. Ingrid Minger, uh, Dave Kidwell, and um, we're going to hear about EIU around the world, mm -hmm. and um, former Governor Jim Edgar. Jim Edgar, EIU to Governor. What a great story that is. It, it was such a privilege for us to be able to do this program, but right now, we need you to take a moment and give us a call. If you've enjoyed the program so far and you are glad that WEIU did a program just on Eastern Illinois University, we would like you to call right now and support it. We're trying to get 10 calls this mm -hmm. first break and I know that our viewers can do it. We believe in you and we believe in public broadcasting and without your support we wouldn't be able to produce a program like mm -hmm. this because we do rely upon our members and donations mm -hmm. and different things like that. So when the community and the university work together, together a win-win. Absolutely. Right now the phones aren't very busy, so let's get the phones ringing. That's what we like. We call it a phone blitz. And yes. what is that? That's when everybody gets on the phone and those phones just blow up. Absolutely. So we need you to call right now. We have people here willing to take your information. It takes about 30 seconds to get the information from you. And we will get back to the program, mm -hmm. but we need you to call. The number's on the bottom of the screen. You can also go online at weiu.net and make a donation there if you would like to do that. But we'd like to hear from you. And if you are a graduate mm -hmm. of EIU, let us know when you graduated sure. and what your major was. And we'll give that shout out when we tell your name as well. Right. When we talk about a program like this, we always say, if WEIU didn't do it, mm -hmm. who would have done it? Who would? This is a almost two-hour program mm -hmm. just on Eastern, and that's what we do here. We're yes. a public broadcasting station, and we know we've done communities in the past, and mm -hmm. we've waited to do one on Eastern. And why did we wait? Because we wanted to wait until we had it down pat and we yes. knew what we were doing. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the way you're going to see so much variety tonight in the program as we continue to air all mm -hmm. the different stories. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll say, oh, my gosh, I never knew that. Right. And then you'll say, oh, my gosh, that brings back so many mm -hmm. memories, the mm -hmm. flood of memories. We heard that from Nancy Dubsick. Absolutely. Yes. And it gives me goosebumps when we, think, when we mm -hmm. actually talk to people that say, Wow, I never knew that. And just like President Hinken, he didn't know some of the things just within three stories. So I know, and he's been here 51 years. 51 and what years. does that tell you? So yeah. many stories, so many yes. things to learn still. This is all mm -hmm. about education, about mm -hmm. learning, about spreading the stories yes. and sharing tonight. Well, stories are such an important thing, and uh, we want you to have a copy of this DVD of this program, your very own copy. For $75, we will send you a, one DVD. But, you know, you might be somebody that's like, okay, I'm an alumni, mm -hmm. but I want to give a copy to my daughter who's an alumni too, or my son that's alumni. Mm -hmm. So two or more, you get a bargain, it's $60. That's right, and this is the only place you can get this. Mm -hmm. We produced this special 
And um, you can get it here at WEIU. You can get it online. Give us a call. We want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And those phone operators want to hear from you. That's Arlene Brown back there all <laughs> dolled up at EIU. <laughs> and she works at Booth Library right here on campus. And she was also a part of another one mm -hmm. of our shows that we did. Right. You know, we think about, um, like Arlene, when you call her, tell us, she can tell her who you are and tell her if you're an mm -hmm. alumni and what, what intrigued you to call. Why did you pick up the phone and dial? We want to know how you feel about this program and why you think it's important so for us to do it. Hey, WEIU is a public broadcasting station and we broadcast over the air to 22 counties, partly in Devigo County, Indiana, but the rest in East Central Illinois. But we are streaming online tonight. Once again, we're streaming on our website, weiu.net. So all the storytellers who are outside of the broadcast mm -hmm. viewing area, all of the alumni, the graduates, students who are currently attending EIU right. can tell their family to tune in tonight. So be sure to share those links via social media so you can spread the word tonight. And if you're sitting there right now and you, you know, you know somebody that mm -hmm. is your neighbor or is your relative, give them a call right now and say, you've got to watch this great program. It's all about Eastern Illinois University. We have two phone operators who are still available. Please Wanted give them a call right now. We'll have a phone list in this first break. <laughs> How exciting would that be? Then could I ring the bell? Yes, Okay, absolutely. that's what we're going to do. We want to ring the bell. So if you want us to ring that bell with a phone blitz, give us a call right now. The phone number's at the bottom of your screen for a gift of $75 to WEIU. We would love to send you a copy of the DVD. I want to say thank you to our underwriters because, once again, we could not have produced this program without your monetary support. So I would like to thank the Eastern Illinois University Alumni Association, the Charleston Area Charitable Foundation, First Mid Bank and Trust, Sarah Bush Lincoln Health Center, Ross and Cindy McCullough, Jim Edgar, Monahan Partners, and the City of Mattoon Tourism. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for your support. You know, we talked earlier about being a public broadcasting station, mm -hmm. so we're non-commercial. So that means we can't do, um, you know, like commercials for people because it's, we can't. So that's why we do programs like this, and that's why we ask you to give to WEIU TV. Yes, we had lots of help putting this program together, lots of people on campus. Uh, we have special thanks to University Marketing and Creative Services, to CATS, the mm -hmm. Center of Technology, uh, Michael Babcock, oh Booth Library, the University Archives, the list goes the Daily on and East on. The News, the Warbler, lots of people took part in producing this program. Well, it took a village. And why did they do it? Because they knew that it was a special program. So if you think it's a special program and you're watching right now, give Warren a call. The phone number's at the bottom of your screen. I hear somebody else is ringing. Let's get Warren back on the phone again. Warren's an Eastern okay, alum. There all right, we, go. we need one more phone. One more phone, first. one more phone to ring, and we've got a phone blitz. We can do this. I know we can do the this. Phone number's at the bottom of your screen, and when you call, we're going to go woohoo. Yes, so, right we now, need, well, we need, we need two, two more, more right people. now. We need uh, Sally and Bob Sterling. Mm -hmm. Bob was one of the faculty mm -hmm. here on campus for several years, and his son teaches here too, right? His son teaches here. He's got uh, two grandchildren, a grandson and a granddaughter who graduated from Eastern as well. So see, it's generation after generation. If you're one of those people, give us a call and let us know that. Yes. Um, you know, we've got some food in the studio tonight. We yes. want to say thank you mm -hmm. to Domino's and also uh, Subway. Thank you for providing mm -hmm. food for us this evening and keeping us healthy and well energized all through the <laughs> night. So we can continue taking phone calls and sharing EIU, this is who we are. You know, people ask, you know, is it fun being on TV with all these, you know, mm -hmm. phone operators? Absolutely it's fun, but it's more fun when you get on the phone and you call. Right now we have a couple of people, Wanda Kay's waiting back here, and Bob and... Sally. Sally, my goodness, I forgot her name. I love you, Sally, but I just forgot your name. So I guess somebody else wants to talk to her on another phone, so that's she's okay. moving, and that's fun. Sally's busy tonight. She went down the hall just a few minutes ago and gave an, mm -hmm. an award to a special education teacher, and some tears were shed down the hall Aww. because we're recognizing our faculty tonight, and mm -hmm. so we couldn't be more happy about that. Well, we bleed blue around here, as you know. If you're an Eastern student, if you're an Eastern employee, or you just love Eastern, we get so excited about that. So if you're out there and you're an Eastern bleed blue person, we need you to get on the phone and call right now. Don't go anywhere. We've got um, five more stories coming up, and then we'll see you again soon. Keep those phones ringing. EIU, this is who we are. I uh, grew up uh, just uh, west of here in Windsor, Illinois, but it was uh, a great, great uh, community Windsor is, uh, small, 1,200 people, 
but a uh, very tight-knit community. It was a great place to grow up. Graduated from Windsor with around 30 people, so quite a small graduating class. A month after I graduated high school, I got a job at UPS, uh, part-time in Mattoon. And then uh, in that following August, I started here at Eastern uh, Illinois University. And so that, I, I wanted to, Eastern was a, a top choice for me. One, I wanted to stay close to home, but also the, the School of Technology had a great program. You know, I, my son is now coming to Eastern here and he asked me if I joined a fraternity. And I said, my fraternity was UPS. Uh, so every night I would leave and, or early in the morning I would go to work. So a lot, of, a lot of time was spent working. One, I wouldn't be where I am with UPS without the, the core, the foundation that, um, that EIU gave me. And um, a big part of that were, were a couple of uh, professors. Uh, Dr. Tom Wascom was, was great in the, in the shop. And I remember uh, my most vivid memories here working in the, the metal shop. Uh, with him and the rest of the class, and he was just a very hands-on guy. And then uh, Dr. Azadi, who just retired, um, he, he and I started the same month at Eastern. So he, his first day was, uh, or his first time was in August of uh, 84 as well. And so we kind of came up through the school together, and obviously he, he uh, ascended to the dean of the business school. One, one of the struggles I had was uh, balance and prioritization. So I had UPS, and during the fall period of time, UPS volume goes up and a part-time supervisor, part-time employee starts working nearly full-time, managing my full course load that I was taking to, to try to get through school a little bit faster to go on to my career. So Dr. Wask would pull me aside if he saw my, my participation slipping and uh, would provide really great counsel and, and advice on, on priorities. UPS was going through an expansion uh, during that period in the, in the early to mid 80s and needed engineers. So I worked in Mattoon for three and a half years, the full duration of my time here at EIU. And then once I got my degree, immediately the month afterwards, I was uh, transferred, promoted and transferred to Indiana. So I worked in the Indianapolis operations as an industrial engineer and time study and air network design and feeder designs and, and did that for another four years. And then in 1991, UPS decided to build a marketing organization. It was staffed with a third engineers, a third salespeople, and a third outside hires. And I was one of the third engineers that were brought into the original marketing organization. And then my family and I moved to Brussels, Belgium where I uh, ran the post-acquisition integration efforts for mailboxes, etc. It's now the UPS store in, in the U.S. Moved back to Atlanta, ran the supply chain uh, marketing organization, so our freight forwarding division, our contract logistics, and our brokerage operations. Then back to marketing and corporate. Then I was put on a uh, team to redesign the U.S. business unit, which was our largest around $35 billion business unit. Then I ran the U.S. marketing organization. Then I went to a acquisition team in Europe. Um, then I came back and ran. I was the president of corporate strategy. And then I, now I'm in uh, Singapore. So that 30-some year journey. Uh, so I'm the president of UPS Asia now. You know, I, my son is now coming to Eastern. You know, we live in Singapore. So one requirement we had, because it's uh, th over 30 hours door to door. So we drew a, a circle on my mom's house and a hundred mile radius, and the same with my in-law's house in Georgia, and said pick any school there, in, in there. And uh, he visited five schools last, last year, and he fell in love with, with EIU, and he's studying uh, kinesiology, and there's a, a really great program here. So that was his, you know, I'm sure home-cooked meals for mom and his Uncle Bub and his cousins being close by don't hurt either. But but he fell in love with the school. Um, the others had much larger class sizes. It was evident that there wasn't nearly as much uh, professor-student uh, engagement, J just the sizes of some of them alone. But uh, it was clear that EIU has a different mix there and that differentiator is something that we can never take for granted even. Um, the foundation, again, that EIU gave, gave me with the educational foundation, the support system, but also there's a few companies left in the world that I think that a, a farm boy from Windsor, Illinois, 
can actually have a career that, that is in engineering operations, marketing, uh, solutions, uh, strategy, acquisitions, and then running an operation like this. I, I, there aren't many left. Every, every morning when I wake up, I go, wow. Greek life at Eastern Illinois University has always been a vital part of the campus. Um, it's always been a, a, a large portion of, of, of people that are here on campus. Whenever I went to school, about 25% of the population um, were in Greek organizations. The oldest organization here on campus um, that's still here today is Sigma Pi, and Sigma Pi came to Eastern in 1947. It was the first year that they were here. Most of the, the fraternities and sororities that they have on campus now are housed in Greek court. And Greek court, actually I learned today, was one of the first in the nation that a university had um, housing specifically designed for the Greek community. Greek life has changed a lot from the 40s of the, that whenever we first came on Eastern's campus until now. The president in the 1980s, um, President Reeves, went to a fraternity off campus and went and looked around the chapter house for dinner and he said, we can do better than this. And that's whenever he came back and really started to plant the seeds for Greek court. And so things like that Eastern has always supported and helped Greek life be the best that it can be. It was built in between 1989 and 92 is when the phase, the first phase um, of it was, was originally built. And then they have um, the majority of the, like I said, the campus um, organizations that are Greek live on campus now, including my own. Um, I went through and um, I'm a Delta Zeta, and I say I am because once you are, you always are for the rest of your life. Um, but I rushed um, and um, went through formal recruitment in, in 2005 and um, joined the house then. Um, and it was truly one of the best decisions that I ever made at Eastern. Um, it gave me so many opportunities and so many great things to do. I was able to, to do a lot of um, community service through the organization, I was also able to learn a lot of things about Eastern. So my senior year, I was able to teach a freshman orientation class, which was so nice. And that was one of the opportunities from being Greek. I met some people, made some connections, was able to move forward from there. Um, also in 2007, I was Eastern's homecoming queen for Delta Zeta, which was so much fun um, to be able to represent our organization that way. A lady that goes to my church now, she and I were just talking the other day and I looked at her and I said, you have Delta Zeta on your shirt. She goes, yeah, I'm a Delta Zeta from DePaul. And I was like, I'm a Delta Zeta from Eastern. And so we were able to have that great conversation that, that, that reached further than just Eastern Illinois University. And so it's something that not only allows you to have a family here, but then as an alum, you go out and meet so many other people. And even when you are here and you're Greek, there are so many opportunities for you to go out and meet other people. The Greek organizations on campus have always been a very large part of Homecoming Week. Um, they did these floats that were just these elaborate floats and would take weeks, if not months, to really prepare. They would have the little tissue paper and make the, the floats just spectacles to see. Greek Life also hosts Greek Week each spring, which is a phenomenally fun event to do. And we have everything from Airband, which is a lip syncing dancing competition that they have in Lance Arena. They also have tugs, which is huge. And people prepare for months for tugs. I mean, I'm talking practices one time, two times, three times a week, if not more. And they tug over ca the campus pond and whichever team ends up into the pond is the one that loses. And it was always so much fun if it was raining and, you know, they were being drugged through the mud with this huge thick rope that they were tugging back and forth and it was something that people would talk about for a long time afterwards who won tugs. We also had like Greek sing which you would practice for a long time and it was like almost a choir competition. We had pyramids where you would build human pyramids out of people. My husband was not Greek whenever he was in college and so he doesn't get it and I always told him like from the outside looking in you'll never understand it but from the inside looking out you can't explain it. It truly is one of the greatest things that you could ever do in my opinion um, that be being Greek and having that sisterhood that's here on campus for you so that you're away from home but then you still have that close tight-knit family, someone that you can always call on. When you start talking about individuals who had an impact on Eastern athletics, you've got to start uh, with the people who have buildings named after them. Of course, the one we're in right now, the Charles Lance uh, Complex. And uh, he was the one who really started Eastern Athletics. There were a couple teams early in the 1900s, but 
they weren't organized, they were coached by link faculty members. Lance came here in 1911, was the athletic director and served uh, for 41 years until 1952, uh, which essentially is a, a lifetime. And during then he coached, uh, well he started out coaching football, basketball, then they started a baseball program. He coached about 1935, uh, all of those sports, and then he gave up football and basketball and just coached baseball, in addition to still being the athletic director and seeing the program expand. So he got it going and really uh, obviously deserves to have this building named after him because he was the first one. Then the, the other one is Maynard uh, Pat O'Brien, uh, nicknamed Pat. There was an actor back in the 30s and the 40s named Pat O'Brien, and I think everyone was then nicknamed Pat O'Brien. He came here after the war. He was a decorated naval officer during World War II. Came here uh, and coached football and track, but most well known as the track coach uh, in cross country. Won a couple national championships in the 60s in cross country, 1974 track championship. During this time, he was the head of the physical education department. So he had a major role when this building was constructed and the football stadium, which is named after him, as far as working with the architects. So he gets a lot of credit for what we have here right now, in addition to his fame as a uh, cross country and, and track coach. The one who had a, a lot to do with the growth of women's athletics, Helen Riley, came here in the 1960s. Uh, then there was not intercollegiate sports for women. They had what they called play days where the, some of the local schools would just come in and have a Saturday play day. But uh, with the growth of women's athletics, it became an intercollegiate uh, program here in the early 1970s, and she became the associate athletic director. So she deserves a real pat on the back to, uh, for the impetus of uh, women's sports. The other person who we need to mention who has a venue named after him is the uh, longtime swimming coach, Ray Padman. Coached 42 years for men's swimming, 29 for women, but he coached longer than any other coach uh, in the history of Eastern, and now the swimming pool here in Lance is named the Ray Padovan Pool. And Ray had a lot of top 10 finishes back when Eastern was a uh, Division II program. So he was significant because of his longevity and the success he had. We've had a number of coaches here who've had great success, but I think in recent times, two names that jump out that people recognize are Bob Spoo in football and Rick Samuels in basketball. Both coached here, each of them for 25 years, uh, Coach Spoo, uh, had nine teams go to postseason tournaments, and Rick in basketball had two NCAA teams in 92 and 2001. So it was their longevity, their contribution, the number of athletes that graduated and gone on to great success, but the way they both carried themselves, their integrity, in addition to the number of championships and the wins, that's what really stick out. So I think those two are names that you've got to include when you talk about the all-time greats here in, in Eastern athletics. You did it! You did it! It's a great win for Eastern Illinois! The sense of responsibility that I feel for the people that have helped me to get where I am today has been my main drive. How you see the world depends on your upbringing and the different perspectives that you had throughout your education. People from backgrounds that are maybe less Western have a different take on international relations and international development. I think uh, the econ department uh, exemplified a pretty diverse culture. Uh, we have professors from all over the world uh, with different backgrounds, different ideologies. And so it's just been a good like melting pot of ideas. Um, the ability to combine athletics with an academic career are unprecedented, and that's why I chose to come here. Being a student athlete, you don't have a lot of time, and you need to be a good time manager because otherwise you don't get your things done. The good thing about track is being a student athlete and especially in a sport like track, which is very competitive, it helps you to take that a little bit into the classroom. I learned through um, discussions with my professors and just uh, interacting with them. And so being able to 
drop into their offices and just like talk to them about what's happening in the news that day has been something that I really appreciate. Academically, I'm very proud of my econ research that I accomplished last year. I'm very much interested in conflict resolution on a global scale, um, which is uh, very much a field I want to learn more about and research I'll probably take up uh, more in depth in grad school. So yeah, I'm very proud of having done that last semester with the help of the econ faculty, uh, which without it I couldn't have done it. There have been a lot of people that have helped me and that have marked my EIU experience, which looking back then, having been here for four years, that will be something that I'll remember and cherish the most. Uh, after I graduated from Charleston, I thought I'd go to Eastern. And that was, you know, we were, I was the first year of the baby boomers, so schools or higher education was just booming. I mean, they had more students coming in than they could handle, and Eastern could care less if I came here or not. Uh, and I got recruited uh, to Wabash College in Crawfordsville, Indiana, because my best friend was an all-state football player, and he also graduated first in our class. They wanted him, and so they let me tag along, thinking maybe they could get him if, if I came. Well, he went to Dartmouth and I went to Wabash one year, and uh, Wabash is an all-boys school, and that is a terrible way to get an education. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to stay awake during class. And uh, so I came back and went to summer school after that and never left Eastern. But student government at Eastern was very important to me uh, because it, it really, it was a good, good training period. I think some people think, well, student government's irrelevant. It's not. Uh, the year I was student body president, we were able to get the curriculum change to graduate from Easter, and students had input for the first time. Big issue back then, this was 1967, and women still had hours at Easter. Uh, even if you were over 21, if you lived in a dorm, you still had hours. You had to be in it. I think it was 10 o'clock during the week and 12 o'clock on weekends. I had to go deal with the president, President Doudna, who was the president and ran this place with an iron hand. I mean, he made every decision at Eastern back then. There wasn't such a thing as academic democracy back then. But Dowd and I got to be where we where we could we could deal. And I remember going in talking about women hours. And of course, he was in his 60s, I think, by then. And uh, very, very proper guy, and very traditional. And I said, you know, we really think we ought to change this. This is not right. He said, well, Jim, he says, I think we have a responsibility to look out for the weaker sex. And I just kind of looked at him like, oh, that's an interesting philosophy, you know, because I was raised by my mother, so I never thought women were the, you know, the weaker sex. But we talked, and finally we, we kind of did a gradual thing. And, you know, three years, women hours were done away with. My senior year was 1968. That's the year everything went up for grabs in the United States. Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, Martin Luther King was assassinated, the Tet Offensive, he later had the Democratic Convention, which was chaos. I mean, it was a very volatile time. Eastern, while we had a lot of change, it wasn't volatile. I remember we had, a, and Vietnam, of course, was a big issue around the, the country. At Eastern, the group that demonstrated against Vietnam, I remember they were protesting out in front of Old Main, and when they came out that night to lower the flag, they all stood at attention. And again, Eastern was, a lot of ways you would say was conservative, but it was a very active political campus. Now, I, I did not graduate with high honors. In fact, I did not graduate with honors. I did graduate though, that was, you know, I was happy about that. I, my grades weren't bad, but when I was student body president, they were terrible. Uh, but, uh, but I always felt like I got a good education at Eastern, but I think I got just as much of an education from student government, from working at Cavens and Bales, as well as the classroom. There's that combination uh, that was uh, very helpful to me. Uh, and most importantly, I met Brenda. Uh, so when I left Eastern, uh, I went over to Springfield as a legislative intern. In fact, what was ironic, I remember when I applied for the internship program, the, one of the professors who was reviewing it at the University of Illinois said, you've got to be the only person I've ever seen this year 
who has a recommendation. You're the student body president, but you're being recommended by the president of the university and the dean of students. And I had developed a relationship with Dr. Doudna. He, he recommended me. Uh, we had, you know, we didn't always agree, but we agreed to work in a very constructive manner, and we'd compromise. And I learned the art of compromise dealing with Dr. Downey. Then later, when I became a state legislator from Charleston, I was very tied to Eastern. I mean, this, you know, I, I looked out for Eastern, and I was involved in higher education matters. And as governor, uh, the Board of Higher Education knew that I cared about Eastern. And they would make a priority list of new construction, and there's only so much money. And they'd make a priority list, and maybe they'd have 40 things on the list, but only you're going to fund 10 of them. Well, they knew that I cared about Eastern. So they used to take Eastern's projects, and they'd put them down about 20. And because they knew that I would not go out of, I would always take the Board of Higher Education recommendation, because I didn't want to get, like we used to have, universities over fighting among themselves, and that U of I and Southern would get all the money, because the small schools didn't have the political clout. And that's why that priority list was very important for the Board of Higher Education. But they knew that I would always care about Eastern, so they put Eastern down at 20 on their project, and then I'd have to come up with money to pay all 20 of the projects to get to Eastern. And about the second time they did it, I called in the guy, and he was the guy I'd work with and knew well, good friend. I said, you do that one more time, you're out of your job. Uh, and Eastern, Eastern didn't get an unfair share, but they didn't get ignored. Uh, but Eastern, because we were small and we really didn't have that much statewide, uh, there was this kind of, hey, he's one of us. And so Eastern's always had a very important part in my life. Uh, and uh, I just feel very fortunate that I grew up in Charleston. I'm very fortunate my parents made that call back early on. We're going to live in Charleston where there's a university and our kids can get an education. And the education, as I said, wasn't just in the classroom. It's the environment of a university town where it was small enough you knew everybody, uh, that you didn't get forgotten, and you actually had professors as teachers, uh, and uh, it, it just has been a very important part of my life. you that have called you deserve a happy dance and that bell because we are so thrilled that we had 17 people call so and we're hoping for how many more this break we'd like to have 17 more of course absolutely so let's let's give some thank yous okay. while you're calling us. while you're calling so the phone numbers at the bottom of your screen if you love what you've watched so far give us a call we have six people and we have some news watch students that are here if you watch news watch it's on at 5 30 monday through friday so we even have some of them answering the phone mm -hmm. today so uh please call Who's going to be the first one? The phone number's at the bottom of your screen. $75 for the first one, or if you want two or more, they're 60 each. So let's get the phone ringing first. So yes. oh, there, yeah. you go. Okay. there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark called, and he actually is from Charleston, but he is away at a, at a conference, and he's like, I knew I wanted to call and support mm -hmm. this program. He bleeds EIU, and he loves that WEIU bleeds blue as well. So thank you so much, Mark. Allison from Springfield call. Thank hey, you so much. I bet that's Allison. I think it is. She's a storyteller. One of our storytellers. Yeah. And Allison, thank you so much. You uh, have a beautiful family, and we're so glad you came to the premiere. Her story is coming up because she started Student Service Day. Yes, that's really a great story. Mary from Lerna. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Bob and Julie from Charleston. That's another storyteller. Mm -hmm. We loved having them in the studio, and we really appreciate them. Jean from Charleston. Thank you. Uh, we have Julie from Bristol, Connecticut. Wow. Who is that? Wow. I hope she's watching us streaming. I hope she is too. And you want to tell people real quick how they do that? We are streaming online tonight. Go to WEIU.net. You can watch there. You can also watch on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. And you can get to both of those from our website, WEIU.net. The social media links are up in the top right hand corners. So be sure to share that with all the people that you know because we want everybody to watch tonight. Tonight is a great night for Eastern and we know that there are so many people that love Eastern Illinois University. We've had past presidents here. We've had past 
past faculty, and we have students. There's a student right now that's on the phone. We all want you to know that we love EIU, and WEIU feels privileged mm -hmm. that we can put a program like this together. Rick from Tuscola called. Thank you, Rick. Sally from Charleston is a special friend of the station. Mark from Charleston called. Thank you so much. And that's what I got so far. Okay, I've got Donna from Charleston. I have Gary from Charleston. Are they sticking together? No. I have um, Charles from Dixon, and he's a 71 Yay. grad. Thank you for calling in. We have Brenda from Hinesboro. Oh, and she's called in. Her sister is an alumni, and unfortunately she had passed away, but she said her sister would have loved watching this program tonight. So she uh, called in honor of her sister. Okay. We have Joseph, um, who was here, it looks like, from 70 to 72. He's from Macon and has two bachelor's degrees Yay. and a master's from EIU and has lots of wonderful memories. That's nice. Thank and, you, Joseph. And when you do call, we want to know, you know, why you call. Did you call mm -hmm. because you're an alum or did you call because you have a child going here or whatever? We want to know your story. We have lots of our storytellers are alumni, too. And so if you look at the intro graphics for each story, it shows when they graduated. Right, right. I have a special thank you to Lou and Mary Kay. Uh, they gave generously to us tonight because you know why? They know the value of a program like Easter, and this is who we are. If WEIU had not done this program tonight, who would have done it? And I can tell you, probably no one. We, as a public broadcasting station, mm -hmm. that's what we do here. We got some underwriting support, but we need for you to call tonight to help support this program. WEIU is licensed to the Board of Trustees of Eastern mm -hmm. Illinois University, so we want to thank them because they mm -hmm. are allowing us to yes. produce this program and share it with all of you tonight. So we've got some yep. phone operators. Yes. We've got two of our Newswatch students on, but all everybody else is waiting for you to call right now. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Once again, the DVDs are available. We have uh, one copy for $75, two or more for $60 each. And so we want you to give us a call tonight so you can get your copy, you can share a copy, spread the word about EIU. So Caitlin, I want to ask you, how are you having, are you having fun tonight with us? I am. So this is Caitlin. She's one of our Newswatch students. Give Hi. us a little bit about what you do in Newswatch. Um, on Wednesday nights, I'm the floor manager. So kind of what Mac's doing tonight, helping you guys give cues and making sure everything's in order for the studio. On Thursdays, I run server, which means I run the you know, video for the Newswatch program. And then on Fridays, I write slash report and I run camera and then I also work at HitMix 88.9 WEIU which is our station our radio station. So. Awesome we're proud of you thank you for being thank here you. tonight and thank you for supporting us. Anytime. So this is what we do we're here for the students and she's giving a big explanation there of all the stuff that she does learning throughout the week mm -hmm. and being here with us tonight. Thanks Caitlin. No problem. Jaina back to you. Thank you so much. Right now as you know there's nobody calling. So what's that telling us? That's telling us that you don't appreciate this program. And we know that you do. So we need you to call right now. Oh my gosh, I have to give a big shout out to Dave and Audrey from Oakland. Um, David was a past president here at Eastern Illinois University. Wonderful people, best memories ever working with them. So thank you so much, Dave and Audrey. We really appreciate you. Um, I'm not sure who this is. Do you know who that is? Um, Abby from Chicago. Uh, 2011 alum. Thank she may you. have been. I don't know if she was Abby that I'm thinking was part of our news watch. If somebody could tell us that maybe later. Yep. If not, thank you, Abby. We appreciate you uh, watching from Chicago, hopefully. Okay, so right now we want a phone blitz. We started to talk about mm -hmm. that and then we got excited about Audrey and Dave calling it. <laughs> so right now the phone number's at the bottom of your screen. We truly love producing this program on Eastern. We know that you love watching, so if you love watching, we need you to call right now. We had some great stories in this mm -hmm. last segment. We had Ross McCullough. He came all the way from Singapore to record mm -hmm. last summer. What so he was the first interview we had for this program, so that's why we named it Midwest of Far East, because he's from Windsor. Mm -hmm. His family's from there, and so what a wonderful family that right. is. If you're calling right now, the first DVD that we would give you is $75, gift to WEIU. Mm -hmm. But you know what? A lot of people are wanting two or more. So we, uh, we would love for you mm -hmm. to get two of those. And some people are just calling and saying, you know what, I don't need a DVD, but I want to give a gift to WEIU-TV. We are a not-for-profit, mm -hmm. so we would welcome any gift like that. So please give us a call right now. 
And I have my, my little we've granddaughter. Got special here. Come here. I have my little Come granddaughter here tonight. Her name is Ava. You want to look this way, Ava? She's shy. Look She's right shy. There. Tell Wave them to, to call everybody. right now. Call right now. Very good. <laughs> there we go. We've got a future broadcaster. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> So hey, I want to put a challenge out. Let's yes. put a challenge out okay. because, Ava, look right here. because your, <laughs> I think um, your aunt was part of Greek life here, right? Yes. Part of Greek life here. Aunt so me. if there was anybody part of Greek life watching tonight, we're challenging mm -hmm. you to call in yeah. and get a copy tonight. Yes, and we, and we do have a story on mm -hmm. Greek life. Yeah. And Ingrid, Ingrid, she was in the last segment. And, and it was so much fun to go through old pictures and look at the Greeks from all the years past. And it was, it was great. And her, her aunt, B, is an alpha gam. So, and she'll be here after a while, too, hopefully to answer the phones. Well, let's spread Ingrid's uh, yes. excitement oh. and get all the Greeks to call tonight Come and on. get copies of those DVDs because we know Greeks like a challenge. Oh, my gosh, they do. Let's get Greek against Greek and let's get them calling. Is this week Greek week? Does anybody know? Yes. Yes. We it are is. just there begun the Greek week. So, uh, what a special time for all the students here at Eastern Illinois University. So, if you're a Greek, mm -hmm. or you've been Give a Greek, a we want you to call right now. The phone number is at the bottom of your screen. We would love to talk to you. And when you call, tell us how many DVDs you want, but tell us your story too. I also want to put out another challenge because Dave Kidwell talked about the yes. EIU coaches. So if you were part of a sports team here on the campus of Eastern Illinois University, call in and get a copy of this. You will want to keep this just for your own personal treasures. Right. It's one of those things that, you know, around the holidays when you may have family and friends come mm -hmm. over, or let's say you're going to Florida for the winter, you're retired, take that DVD with you, mm -hmm. and wow, what an entertaining uh, DVD that would be for friends and family. And one more challenge. Okay. All the international students out there. Yeah. Lots of people around the world can hear just all about the experiences that you have here at EIU. Mm -hmm. That was a great story. That was something um, very special. Sure. He, he showed his experience here. He's actually over in Germany now. That's So wonderful. I just emailed him today to let him know that this mm -hmm. was airing tonight. So all the international students here on campus and those abroad, we hope to hear from you tonight as well. Sally, uh, one of our uh, storytellers, is sitting back there waiting for the phone to ring. So call her. Sally has been a great supporter in w of WIU and, and Hit Mix Radio as well. And she's so humble, but we truly appreciate her. We love the Warbler. Mm -hmm. Her story is on the yeah. Warbler. And me personally, I spent hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours getting our photos. If it wasn't for the Warbler, I don't know that we could have done a program on Eastern. Hey, I was talking to Sally just a minute ago on the break, and she said, isn't it great? Doesn't it make you feel so great? Mm -hmm. to hear people say how much this show means to oh them and gosh. it really does that means a lot mm -hmm. to us so when you call in let us know what you think of the show and what your favorite stories mm -hmm. were if you're a graduate of EIU and what your major was we want you to call right now the phone numbers at the bottom of your screen and we cannot stress enough that we need you to call this uh, program was a it was a four to five month program um, project for us a lot of hours spent we need you to call right now. If you appreciate this program, give us a call. The phone number's at the bottom of your screen. We've got lots more stories coming up. Mm -hmm. We have one on the nightlife in Charleston. Oh. That's a fun story. Okay, just so you know, then that story's going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. You've got to call your friends and family and say, if you ever went to a bar during your college mm -hmm. days, you've got to watch this next story. It's really good. Let me give some thank yous here real quick. We've got Susan from Libertyville. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We've got Doris from Ramsey. Her husband, Mike, and son, Brian, and son-in-law, <laughs> Tony, and daughter-in-law, Andrea, are all EIU oh alum. Gosh, yeah. yeah. That's what we like to hear. Good. And we also have Terry from Charleston. So thank you. Thank you so much. The phones are still, oh gosh, nobody's on the phone right now. So that gives you an opportunity to get on your phone and you call us and say, I love this program. It's all about EIU, and you want to support a program like this. Before we get back to the show, let me give you a little idea of what's coming up. <laughs> we went to Chicago and actually interviewed four of the storytellers, and we have Raul Wahi and Tony Zapparo. Um, they were um, business majors, so um, great story there. We have Lola Burnham talking about the Daily Eastern News. Ted Gregory was part of the Daily Eastern News mm -hmm. as well. I'm not going to give that one away. Mm -hmm. Jim Edgar's going to talk about a furry little friend on campus. Yes. And Allison Maley will talk about starting Student Service yeah. Day. So we're going to get back to the show, but if you still want to call, you can call while you're watching. We'd love to have you call. Thank you so very much. Don't go anywhere and enjoy EIU. This, this is, is who, who we, we are. are.
Uh, seems like after Prohibition, which entered in 1933, probably the first bar that would have been opened and would have been available for students was the Black Front or Rocks. Not too long after that, Walt Warmoth uh, purchased this establishment, which was called Little Campus. Uh, being right across from Tim Hall, uh, he had a great business, but he also realized in the mid-1950s they were going to build a new dormitory, three dormitory, LSD complex, uh, down off of Grant Street. So being two blocks or two houses from where they lived at that time, he bought the lot and bought, built Walt's. So Walt had pretty well set himself into good business practices, but the interesting part is none of those were bars. They were all food establishments, uh, later to become bars, and but they were still social hangouts for uh, for the students at Eastern. Walt had, uh, had his, play, his establishment called Walt's, uh, and during Marty Patton's era of, that of going to Eastern, he worked for Walt. Post that Marty's time in the major leagues, uh, Marty Patton purchased Waltz from Walt Warmoth, and then it uh, was turned into more of an establishment for of a bar. The proximity close to campus was uh, was very Panther oriented, uh, as you can see by the Panther out in front. That is one of the big photo shots of people that uh, that come come home or come back to Eastern and with the alumni to have their picture taken with that panther out in front of Marty's. Uh, in the early 80s, uh, Mike Noop had the Uptowner, which was a very successful and prominent business. Uh, also, on the way downtown, you'd go by <clears throat> what now is Lefty's Holler, uh, which used to be Sporty's, was really a, uh, a, a, a going business. Later on, the uh, establishments uh, also moved a little farther north to Ted's Warehouse, and that was in the uh, 70s and 80s, all the way into the early 90s. Uh, Ted's was basically built around music. The 80s and 90s <clears throat> was Mother's. Uh, Mother's was a very well uh, established bar for fraternity and sorority events. Ike's has transcended uh, through quite a few different changes in over the decades. Uh, gone from where Ike Kindred had it with the wooden floors and all the booths to where one of the original or one of the owners after that took out all the booths, had it more of a large area uh, for standing gathering. Uh, the new owners now have done a wonderful job of bringing this back and refurbishing it by putting in the booths. When people come back and the alumni come back to Eastern, uh, one of the first things they do if they're taking their spouse or taking their, their children or taking their family, they take them to where they used to roam when they were on campus. Many of these people met their spouses here. Many of these people develop relationships that are lifelong relationships that, uh, especially now with social media, with Facebook, that now have been re rekindled to where they can come back together. And then the ease of, of having these reunions with people and setting them up makes it great to be able to come back to these establishments that meant so much to them. And now they mean, mean even more through the nostalgia of being able to share it and share those stories and, and those laughs with, with friends and people that they were able to be here with. So Tony and I met in an entrepreneurship class and um, Tony was very different than anybody else that I knew. I had gaps in my knowledge which bothered me immensely at the time, right? If I didn't know something, I, I just, I wanted to learn it. And so part of that was I had never taken anything relating to creating a business, forming a business, how to run it, management. I was more on the kind of financial modeling analytics side. I already had 21 hours for the semester, which was the max you could take. And so I went to Kathy Schmitz and I said, can I take this for no credit? Because I want to hear what they have to say. I think it's going to be beneficial. And she said, okay. Everybody in that class there was in that class because we're getting credit hours for our work besides one person. And that was Tony. Dr. Minnis had a very unique way of teaching. Sometimes he'd just pull out the paper, read an article, and then we'd discuss about it. And I remember him saying, 
he just took a random pause in the class and he points me out and he points Raul out and he says, you two should talk or you two should become friends because I know a little bit about you, Raul. I know a little bit about you, Tony, and you both are different. Dr. Menace is like, um, you need to pick somebody else to partner with and um, you're gonna build a business plan in this class. I don't remember much of the exacts after, but that's kind of the introduction we needed. And then it got to the course of working on a business plan together, you know, Wazi Financial. Okay, we're gonna build an investment company. What are all these words? I'm like, I'm not really sure. I don't know what I got myself into, but I guess we're partners, we're gonna figure this out. So we write this business plan. And when I say we wrote it, like I think I might have done some of the design on like the graphics of the business plan. So it was just easy to kind of collaborate back and forth together. Um, and it just spiraled, right? I enjoyed, he taught me a lot of things that I wasn't getting exposure to. He had a ton of experience coming in. He, I mean, he's, he's worked with his family um, on the entrepreneurial route far like before I ever did. Um, and so the things he would teach me about business and about how they run, like that was invaluable. Like sure, I knew a lot of stuff about it, but I never had done it um, to the extent. Uh, and so that's where I don't think he gives himself enough credit. That was the first business plan I ever made with Tony. And right then and there, I knew that he was very special. It was the single biggest moment probably in our lives. Um, and you never know how it could have turned out besides that. Tony had kind of graduated and now he's like, hey, you remember that business plan we wrote about that investment company? I said, yeah. He's like, okay, I think I'm gonna do that. And our business plan evolved into what is today LLT Group, and it's a digital marketing agency that solves businesses' problems. If it was just me, I would have failed long ago. I would have failed many times. I would have lost tons of money. I, who knows? Who knows where I would have been? Could have still been successful to this day, but we are very lucky from my perspective of in the beginning, you have a lot of fear and you have a lot of risk that you're sharing. And being able to put that and share that with someone else and not just internalize it yourself made a world of difference. I don't think I could do it with anyone else as seamlessly as we've done it. And so I view it as luck, being in the right time, being in the right place, being aware about what we want to do and growing together. But I talked to so many people and they, again, I wouldn't know how to duplicate it if I had all the resources in the world. We have that perfect partnership because I've learned just as much from him as he has from me, and it's like the perfect blend. Um, so it's fun, and we get to have fun with it too, right? Like it's, like it's like two best friends that get to be on the same journey together. Back in 1915, we had three young men who thought that the football team, the blue and the gray, needed more uh, coverage. So they wanted to start a student newspaper so there would be coverage of the football team. So they went to then President Livingston C. Lord and got his blessing. They were completely independent. They were not trying to become part of the university, but they thought they still needed the okay of the president and he gave it to them. Um, they were actually located for the beginning in a house that was across the street from Old Main on Lincoln Avenue. They sold ads, they sold subscriptions, 50 cents a semester, a dollar for the whole year. The first issue came out November 5th, 1915, and the front page featured a story about the football team, which was victorious. And then the story on the other side of the front page was about the first homecoming. So the Daily Eastern News' anniversary aligns with the anniversary of Eastern's homecoming because they both happened at the same time, the, the same year, 1915. And then after a few years, they went bankrupt. So at that point, the university did take over the newspaper. It was still student-focused and, and run completely by the students, reported by the students, um, but it moved into Old Main, and it was in Old Main then for several years. 
someplace down in the actual building and then for a time it was actually up in the tower was was where their office was which that would have been cool to be able to look out and see everything all over the place. We are one of two daily newspapers left in the state as far as colleges go. We have our own press which is pretty much the reason why we're still able to print five days a week. Most other uh, schools our size and larger have gone to one or two days a week print and then trying to go five to seven days a week online. Sunday through Thursday nights the students are in the newsroom working the copy desk, writing headlines, laying out the pages, getting their photos ready. They decide what to cover, they decide how to cover it, they decide how it should be played in the newspaper, where it should be played, what's going to be a featured story on the website, what's going to be just you know run as a headline and a little bit of type. Um, so they, they do make all the decisions themselves. Lots of times you'll find that the students rise to the level of professionals they know what they need to do and they do it and they, they get the stories covered. We of course have covered big events on campus when Blair Hall burned several years ago. That was a huge story um, for us. But I, one of the things I think is, that the students do a great job on is covering just the day-to-day -day life here. Um, they keep up with the Faculty Senate. They keep up with the Council on Academic Affairs. They make sure that all the things that have to be covered get covered and then they cover other things that are just interesting for people. We really do consider ourselves as the quote-unquote paper of record for Eastern where like the New York Times tries to be the paper of record for the country, we try to be the paper of record for Eastern because we are the place we want people to be able to go to in 25 years and look back and find coverage of the big events of the day. Um, if they're here in town, they can pick up a paper. Lots of times I go to lunch uh, around town and people in the restaurants will be sitting there reading the Daily Eastern News. So for a lot of people, this is a, a valuable uh, way to get information. Uh, our first president, Livingston C. Lord, used to um, speak in chapel every morning, which we don't have anymore, and then of course also spoke to the graduating classes. And in one of his charges to the graduating class, he used the phrase, tell the truth and don't be afraid. And sometime in the 1930s, the Daily Easter News, which wasn't even called the Daily Easter News then, um, adopted that as its motto. And that is what the students try to live by when they're deciding what to cover and how to cover it. They don't want to be afraid of what the truth will show, even if it might step on somebody's toes, even if it might be inconvenient to Eastern to have that news covered, if it's news happening here, the students want to make sure that they cover it. I uh, decided to start visiting uh, college campuses uh, around uh, the fall of my senior year. And the first place I went to was Eastern because I had a friend's older brother who went there. Uh, and I immediately fell in love with the campus because of its beauty. It was uh, surprisingly beautiful. I really loved that. And I was just sort of wandering around. I was thinking about journalism at the time. Uh, and so I found the journalism building, which was uh, the student services building next to the power plant. And I kind of walked in, and it's a pretty compact place. And I was wandering around, and uh, I accidentally uh, walked into a classroom because those classrooms are really tight and closely, um, closely packed. Uh, and I realized right away that I'd walked into a classroom, so I uh, threw myself out of the room quickly and then stumbled into another room that happened to be uh, the director of the journalism uh, department's office, Daniel Thornburg, who happened to be sitting behind his desk. And uh, he smiled and said, can I help you with something? And I said, well, uh, I'm a senior in high school and I'm thinking of coming down to school here. He said, well, have a seat. And he spent 20 minutes or so talking with me. Uh, very sincerely, very generously, uh, really graciously. Uh, uh, DT, as I got to know him later on, was that kind of a guy. Uh, and um, uh, as soon as I walked out of that uh, little chat, I knew where I was going to go to school. Uh, and so uh, I ended up there at Eastern and uh, thinking of journalism as a major. Uh, and uh, so uh, early in my second semester, 
freshman year, I kind of got up my courage to walk into the Daily Eastern News office and say, uh, hey, I, I, do you guys need any help down here? And as soon as I did that, they grabbed me and <laughs> threw me into the mix uh, of the Eastern News office, which became uh, much like a family for me. Uh, and it was a great, great environment. I loved uh, it from the get-go. Uh, uh, there were uh, people from all walks of life. You know, we had sorority sisters and jocks, and we had guys who were in rock bands and, and total slackers and artsy types and middle-of-the-road types and clueless people like me. Uh, but uh, we, we, we all um, realized uh, how important it was, and we took very seriously uh, uh, putting out that paper on a daily basis. And it was a student-run newspaper, five days a week, as many of you probably know right now. Um, uh, at the time, and I think it still is, it was one of only two public universities its size with a student-run daily newspaper coming out of college and being ready to go. I mean, I was really ready to go. I, I, I cannot believe how well prepared I was through that journalism program and through the Daily Eastern News. So I was at uh, the Winona Daily News for a, a little over a year, and then I uh, got a job at the Daily Herald, and I was there for quite a while, almost nine years, uh, and then I got hired at the Chicago Tribune, uh, and that was in December of 1991, and uh, I've been there ever since, doing stories from uh, the coastline of Peru to uh, Bemidji, Minnesota, to uh, Key West, Florida, to Hurricane Katrina. In 2008, uh, I was part of a team of uh, six reporters uh, that won a Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting. Um, one was a graduate of Loyola University, another was a graduate of Northwestern University, another was a graduate of Stanford University, another one went to, uh, graduated from um, Columbia University Journalism School, another one graduated from a place called Harvard University, and another one graduated from Eastern Illinois University. So uh, I, I say that only because um, Eastern is the kind of a place um, that gives you that shot, that gives you that um, opportunity uh, if you're willing to learn from your mistakes and keep plugging away. Um, and that's, again, another reason uh, that I have a deep affection for the place and the people who um, helped me. The thing that really I most remember about Eastern was Napoleon. Napoleon was this stray golden retriever, and that's the first golden retriever I've ever seen. They didn't have many golden retrievers back in the 50s. He and his, his mate was a German shepherd named Woofy, and they would wander around. They weren't the official mascot at that point. They were just two stray dogs. They had several litters of pups, and they'd always pick out somebody's porch and have them underneath the porch. And so for years, it was a distinction in, Ellen, in Charleston to say, well, my dog is a descendant of Napoleon. Napoleon was this big, lovable golden retriever uh, that uh, he would he would always come to all university events, even before he was the official mascot. Now, one time, and when school wasn't in, he would come to different homes, uh, and he'd always come to our home. I remember Christmas Eve, his him being in the house with Woofie, because uh, it was cold outside. He knew that we would give him some food, and he, he would come in there. But uh, what happened, they weren't official. He wasn't the official dog, but everybody at Eastern felt like he was. Well, the police shot Woofie. They said she was a stray dog, and it just caused a huge uproar. And at that point, Napoleon became the official mascot at Eastern. And it was made clear to the Charleston police, do not touch Napoleon. From then on, he was listed as the official mascot. You would go to events, uh, and Napoleon would always be there. If Napoleon wasn't there, then you just, your event was a failure. He would go into classes, and professors were used to him walking in, and he, and it was a sign of his uh, thought that professor was a good professor, he was a good lecturer, if Napoleon would walk in and go to sleep. Now, if Napoleon walked in and about two minutes later got up and left, then that professor better work on his lectures. People would come in and do concerts. Uh, back then, uh, Louis Armstrong was here once and people like that. And they were told, now, during your 
performance, there might be this golden retriever that walks up on the stage. Don't get scared, that's, that's just what he does. He, and at any football game or basketball game, he'd show up. I was in eighth grade. I remember when they told us in class that they had found him. He had died uh, that winter and they'd found him underneath somebody's porch. And then they buried him south of Old Main where they have a plaque. Now, a lot of people don't know Napoleon today. And every new president since, uh, I think, 1999, I have had a little chat with about Napoleon. Uh, so they understand. I take him out and show him where he's buried. And so they, they know who Napoleon is. Hi, my name is Allison Maley, and uh, we are here today in the Illinois State Capitol in the House Chamber. Um, I am a 2002 graduate and also a 2010 graduate of Eastern Illinois University. Um, while I was an undergraduate student, I was student body president uh, from 2002 to 2003. Um, so a lot of my time at Eastern was spent um, in the Residence Hall Association and student leadership and student government. Um, so that's really what kind of makes my experience at Eastern Special uh, were the experiences that I had as a student leader um, and the projects that we worked on together as, as student government members. Um, so one of the projects that I worked on in particular was called, now it's called Panther Service Day. Uh, the first year it was called the uh, Bucket Brigade, which is modeled after a program from my hometown in Alton uh, where we had student volunteers and community volunteers paint homes of folks in the uh, Charleston and Mattoon community. So it was really kind of a way to um, try to kind of rebuild some of those uh, bridges that had been burned uh, amongst the student population and the, and the community at the time. Um, so, you know, it was something that I'd worked on as a, as a high school student where we had gone out and uh, made some small repairs and did some painting on, on homes in the community. Um, so I worked with a lot of folks in Charleston and on the Eastern Campus to try to uh, model that same type of program and kind of provide a community service to our, to our, our neighbors in, in Charleston. So now Panther Service Day has really grown. Um, it's still uh, active on, on Eastern's campus and student leaders are still uh, reaching out to the community, usually in April, sometime in the spring. Uh, weather permitting to go and, and visit with community members. Um, I believe they do a lot of, of help at the Douglas Hart Nature Center. Um, I think they've gone out and, and cleaned fire trucks even um, and, and kind of gone out and done some community service projects all throughout the Charleston, Mattoon, and even the Coles County region. Um, so it's really neat to kind of see that program still in existence today and having those kind of building those relationships amongst the student population and the, the community population at large. Um, so it's something I'm really proud of and I'm really excited that it's still happening. A lot of my success and a lot of my skills um, in, in lobbying and, and community development and um, advocacy and communications came from uh, my experience as a student leader at Eastern and, and having that freedom um, and that flexibility and that um, those opportunities to really create projects and work with others in the community, um, you know, write press releases and, and really kind of reach out to others across campus and, and across the community to try to build something together. Um, I think is what helped me uh, come into this position and, and be successful at it. So uh, thanks to Eastern and thanks to all the opportunities that were given to me um, and thanks for the opportunities that are, that are offered to uh, incoming students and students uh, for years to come through student government and other student leadership opportunities. A great section of uh, stories and one of my favorites mm -hmm. I have to say just started because it brought it off, back started off with Ron Bales and bar uh, bar life is that what we well, call it was it? called nightlife nightlife here at, uh, in Charleston during your EIU experience so it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. to lots do the research fun, for that lots of different places mm -hmm. to visit while you're in town lots of alumni come oh back to a gosh. lot of those establishments of course they do and everybody remembers the Panther Mm -hmm. At yep. Marty's, that's and a great any, I bet you there's lots of people out there that remember Ted. So 
I'm yes. going to challenge you. If you went to any of those establishments, have lots of great memories, just get a copy for yourself tonight of the DVD because that alone mm -hmm. brings back lots of memories. You see a lot of photos in there, right. maybe a lot of people that you know. Right. For a gift of $75 to WEIU, we would love to send you a copy of the program you're watching tonight. And for $60, if you get two or more, it's $60 each. So we would love to have you give tonight. We've had a total of 28 people call tonight, which has been great. And we're going to do some of the thank yous here in a second. But let's get the phone blitz going right now. If you love this program, please get on your phone right now and call us. We need you tonight to support a program the WEIU has produced. Right now, you're seeing a news watch um, student. student. And what does he do? New, what does he do? Weather. He does weather. weather so him and Everett, Everett, Everett. do that. So yes. we love having our Eastern students here and to be a part of this. It's exciting. Mm -hmm, it is. My, and if you watch news watch, give us a call and let us mm -hmm. know what you think about it and grab a copy of the DVD as well and let him know yes. what a wonderful job he's doing. We have news. <laughs> yay. We, we are proud of our news watch and it's Monday through mm -hmm. Friday mm -hmm. from um, at 536. And, you know, it's great to see these young mm -hmm. students come here and, wow, they leave here with so much knowledge and they get really good jobs. I'll tell you what, a lot of them are in the studio with us tonight mm -hmm. because there was some weather we were concerned mm -hmm. about. We've got Ever over here and he's doing social media. We've got some other students back here. Cameron Craig was back there sure. from Geology Geography. So if you want to say thank you to them, mm -hmm. the way to say thank you is to call tonight, yes. get a copy of the DVD, support WEIU because when you support WEIU, we in turn can support students and their broadcasting careers. That's right, Ken. Right now, there's nobody calling, so that's not good. We, well, there we go. One, thank you. So right now, we have uh, several people answering their phone. Some storytellers are back mm -hmm. here, so please call. The number's on your screen, and uh, that's Wanda Kay right there, and she's, get, she's the one that gets the first call. So Blythe would be the next one. She's my niece. Mm -hmm. She's an alumni here at um, Eastern, so we're excited that Blythe's here, along with all the other people in the studio tonight. Hey, there was a couple of um, gentlemen who were part of the story segment, uh, Raul Wahi and Tony Zapparo. They were part of the School of Business and um, graduates, very successful alumni. If you were part of the School of Business, mm -hmm. give us a call tonight. I know Jeannie Dow is one of the thank right. yous we're going to give. Mm -hmm. Claire was one of our students yes. as well. She was one of our Newswatch students. So I'm putting a challenge out for the School of Business alumni tonight That's as well. great idea. So we want to give a shout out to Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. We love you and we love your daughter. She was a joy to have mm -hmm. here uh, at WEIU TV and radio. We'd like to give a, a thank you to Denise Head from Tennessee. Tennessee. She graduated in 1981 from EIU and she ran cross, cross country and track. So thank you so much. Uh, Shannon and Andy from Charleston. He was a storyteller for Charleston. This is our story. Yes. And for Matt Toon, this is our story. Arlene from Paris. She's answering the phone right now. She's the class of 2003, and she's been an employee here at Eastern since 1992. 27 plus yeah, years. So Arlene. just give a hand to her. Arlene Good is job. a. She, she bleeds blue. Yes, yeah, she does. And we depended on her to find a lot of photos for the stories that you're watching tonight. We want to give you another chance to call right mm -hmm. now. The number's at the bottom of your screen. WEIU is a public broadcasting station. Without your support, we would not be able to produce programs such as this. We've produced a lot of different Our Story programs on several communities around, and we wanted mm -hmm. to produce this one on EIU because we want to tell who EIU is, and we can only do that mm -hmm. with your support. So be sure to give us a call tonight, $75 for one copy, Two or more, $60 each. And right now is your opportunity. Call the number at the bottom of your screen. Well, I have a very special guest sitting here uh, waiting to take your phone call. But this is Matt. And you are an alumni of Eastern Illinois University. And you were affiliated with the radio station, weren't you? I had roots in what was known as WELH, which existed for 20 years here on campus, a completely student built and operated station uh, at the time and it eventually gave the seeds to WEIU folded into WEIU FM uh, about 1994 19, uh, mm -hmm. or 84 and you know was able to succeed and Move we're the still going. Whole station on. We're still going. Yeah. Some of the people we worked with are no longer here, but, but you still, we're still here. You still get in contact with some of your friends from oh, back yeah. in the day. 
Oh yeah, we have a. I've had a great group of friends who were from that station. We get together every year. We've done it for 40 years now. That's awesome. This this year would have been that anniversary. Yeah. We're going to hear more from Matt and his story in just a little bit, but. Being a part of this led to some other connections on EIU. I don't know if you know this or not, so let the cat out of the bag. What are the other things you do on campus? Okay. If you graduated from Eastern any time in the last quarter century, I said your name <laughs> crossing the stage. I said, no one gets out of here unless they cross through my toll booth. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing. A um, lot of sports opportunities that I had, not only with the athletic department, but moved into the Illinois High School Association. So. I do the state track meet, the state cross country meet, the state badminton meet, mm -hmm. and travel, travel across the state doing track meets. I'm at Joliet Stadium this Saturday. There you go. Well, you've got the voice for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's all because you started here, it's right? It's all because I came to Eastern. That's right. There you go. Bump for that. All right, Matt, thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate your story. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Jana, over to you. Thank you, Matt. He is a great, great storyteller. We really appreciate him, Matt Pye. So right now, there's no one calling. We need you, yes, you, to get on the phone right now. We need a phone blitz. And we get a phone blitz. This whole place lights up. It's so much fun. So right now, the phone number's at the bottom of your screen. If you are a graduate from Eastern Illinois University and you've walked across that stage, we would love for you to call tonight. We need you to call tonight. We talked earlier. If WEIU-TV had not done a program on Eastern, who else would have done it? And we can say Nobody. probably no one. Nobody. We loved making this program. It took a lot of work. That's why we're asking you for mm -hmm. your support along with our underwriters that were so generous. I want to put out another challenge. I'm okay. all about challenges yes, tonight. Yes, she is. So Ted Gregory was the Pulitzer Prize winner mm -hmm. from uh, EIU. And um, there's a lot of students who take part in the Daily Eastern yes, News. Yes, there is. And we heard that story as well right before uh, Dr. Lola Burnham told that story. If you were ever a part of the Daily Eastern News, if you tell the truth and you aren't afraid to, <laughs> you give us a call tonight. <laughs> That's really good. I love that. I learned something. So right now, the phones are just quiet. It feel, I feel like there's crickets in here. I can almost hear them. So that's not a good thing for us. If you have loved watching this program, if you learned one thing tonight from this program, we really need your support. So please go to the phone. If you don't want the DVD for yourself, you can give it to someone else or just give a gift to WEIU to show your appreciation. So far tonight, we've had several people call, but we can tell you right now, we need more. We do need more. And let me continue to tell you, we're streaming online. So if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, you know what, I don't know if so-and-so out of the broadcast area knows about this show, be sure to tell them to go to our website, weiu.net. And you can click on our Facebook link, you can click on our YouTube link, and share it with all your friends outside of the viewing area. And also on Facebook, we have a group because we want to extend the stories from tonight. And so join the Facebook group, EIU This Is Who We Are, and share your stories from here on out. Jaina, you've got someone over there that you want to talk to, right? Boy, do I ever have somebody over here. This is Miss Arlene Brown, and she has loved Eastern forever. So tell me your connection. Well. I started working here in 1992, up in the castle. Mm -hmm. You know the great, great place castle. to work. Yeah, it's great. I've worked there. I've worked in financial aid. I've worked in housing and dining, and now I work mm -hmm. at the library in the dean's office. We have a new dean. A lot of happening things going mm -hmm. on at the library. Mm -hmm. It's National Library Week. Wow. Yeah, so that's great. And I got my degree here in 2003 from the School of Business, so another challenge. Yeah, yes. come on, School of Business, <laughs> let's step up. So um, I do bleed blue. We know that you do. She's dressed in blue tonight, and we really appreciate you, Arlene. She was a storyteller for Paris. This yes, is our story. Is. So we love it when we get to know all these great people, and then they come back and say, I want to be a part of this program. It's a great thing to be a part of, so please, you know, give us a call. Thank you, Arlene. Call us. We appreciate it. Let me tell you, we all bleed blue here tonight. We're wearing blue. We've got blue on the screen. All of the banners that you see back behind us usually live in Old Main, and we want to thank the admissions crew for allowing us to use those beautiful banners back there. Hey, Allison Maley told us a story about Student Service Day, and there's lots of students who participate in that, especially at Jumpstart at the beginning of the year. And if you were part of Student Service Day, you know um, Allison, if you know Rachel, if you know, know Christy, if you know um, um, Beth, 
just give us a call and say, hey, this is what I've done for Student Service Day because our students are out in the community doing lots and lots of service projects. It's real exciting when you see Eastern students doing things in the community. And that means a lot to those of us who live in Charleston. When we see the students out there and they all have their t-shirts on, it gives us this great feeling. It's called town and gown. You know, Eastern is a part of Charleston mm -hmm. and we want Charleston folks to become a part of Eastern. And we want to hear from you. Call us right now. This is so important. Mm -hmm. This is such a very special program mm -hmm. on Eastern Illinois University. And there's been thousands of people over the years who have been a part of this university. Think about what this university means to you. Think about the education, where it led you in life. Mm -hmm. Think about the experience, the friendships, the the relationships, your husbands, your wives, your girlfriends, <laughs> your boyfriends. Who knows all the people that you've met here and what it's turned into. This show matters. And we need you to call in and get a copy of the DVD to let us know that this matters to you. And how do you call? And how do you get your own copy? You call right now. The number's at the bottom of your screen. And we would love to be able to say your name and thank you on air. We want to tell your story. So for a gift of $75 to WEIU, we'll send you a DVD. Two or more are $60 each. There are people calling and saying, I want to. I want to give one to somebody I know that would love to hear the history of Eastern as well. We need your phone calls right now. We need you to call, get on the phone, and uh, Blythe's on the phone right now, and so is Wanda Kay. We still need more phone calls, so please be the next one to call. We've got more stories coming up down in the Fine Arts Center. We're going to hear about Newswatch, uh, Bob Sterling, he was here mm -hmm. earlier, the sports teams, uh, someone who came back for mm -hmm. a uh, alumni uh, anniversary and someone who reconnected with EIU just recently. We like so don't that. go anywhere. This is more of EIU. Woo! This, this is, is who we are. Uh, and uh, the original building and it had fallen into significant disrepair in the intervening 40 plus years uh, to the point where um, during a Christmas break pipes burst flooded the art wing and by the time uh, people got to it there was about three inches of standing ice in the building. It was really in terrible shape. It was dark, uh, it was low ceilinged uh, we had outgrown the venues, uh, and it was uh, not one of the prettier buildings on the inside. In 2000, we sent out the call for architects to bid, and uh, we got a remarkable response. Uh, we winnowed it down to five candidates, and they included the IM Pay Group out of New York City. IM Pay, of course, the uh, premier uh, architect of, of the day, and Michael Graves out of Princeton, another major architect, and um, Antoine Predock out of New Mexico. What we wanted in the building was that the building itself be a work of art. Uh, we wanted, wanted it to say art uh, or fine arts, and Predock gave us a very exciting kind of architecture, something that was quite unique. I guess I'll begin in the concourse, which is really dramatic, and uh, it, it is visually striking from the white curvilinear lines of the theater to the hard modernist lines of the black box to the mirrors that take you into the main part of the concourse. The language of theater is throughout the concourse. You'll notice that there are catwalks. The lights, if you look up, and most people don't, but if they'll look up, they'll see theater lights lighting the concourse. Um, the red zone, very dramatic. And then the copper taking the exterior language of the building and taking it inside. And it's a very tactile building. As you walk through the building, you're able to look into studios. Here, you can actually look down from an observation point and see a sculpture studio. In the music wing, you can uh, look down and see band rehearsal. You actually get to see not only the product of art and music and theater, 
but you also get to see the process. And most of us don't get to see the process. There's an outdoor performance area uh, that we have used right by the Ruth Duckworth sculpture. Uh, the lecture hall is constantly in use. Um, this is maybe my favorite venue right here, uh, the recital hall. I think it's gorgeous. The sound is amazing. And when you come and see a trio or a quartet uh, perform here, it is so intimate. It's just wonderfully intimate. Performers from all over the world come in. Uh, Moscow Orchestra wanted to record here because the acoustics were so good in the, in the Dvorak Concert Hall. But it was exciting to be a part of all of those decisions, working closely with Predoc, and um, I don't know how else to say, it was really just a perfect climax. Nineteen eighty-six was the opening of the station, and the news operation uh, began at that point in time with news scan. We didn't have much in the in the operations area where the news operation was supposed to be. Were and they had, I believe, a typewriter or two, and I think we had an Illinois News Network line. And I realized we had a very steep hill to climb to make this an operational television station. Uh, the exciting thing was the excitement and the work ethic of the students. Um, I can remember Kathy Gravett and Brian Tria were two of the first anchors, and they did a spectacular job. My job was, as a journalist, I didn't care much about what else they were learning. I wanted them to be journalists, and that's, I think, I'm very proud of, that we turned out journalists, and we turned out some very good ones. As you may well know, they've um, gone on to do network uh, news, to be leaders at major stations in the country, to do other kinds of developmental work. And I think some of the biggest uh, real achievements in those early years was that students got a chance to do things they otherwise would not have had a chance to do. I'm particularly proud that Kelly Goodwin, who was in the second group of students to go through this program, has actually taken the place I started with, as news director. And in her tenure, uh, she has just piled up reward after reward and has really built this program. There's nothing that uh, any teacher could ask for more than to have a former student replace them in their work. This is a valuable program, and we've done something from the start here that very, very few places have done. Uh, and that is to give students an opportunity to, to grow, um, to many of them will contribute to the broadcast industry, um, many will go on to public relations spots, etc. But it's hands-on, and the hands-on product is the most important. Not only that, the skills they learn, uh, speaking in front of cameras, uh, beginning to really articulate their own thoughts and ideas, clearly is valuable regardless of what field they go into. Nineteen forty six then I'd just been released from the United States Air Corps and uh, the service in it right at the end I knew that I was going to be released and so I had to give some thought. Do I want to be a farmer? as my dad, or do I want to go to a university and get a degree in teaching? There was no, no problem that I had resolving that issue, and just as soon as I was released, then a month later, I was enrolled at Eastern. And at the time then, I was assigned a position uh, as one of the students in Old Maine. That's where all the students were located, in fact, I think there were 1,350 students at, in that particular class. And so we were located on the second floor. Responsibility was ours on meeting the class assignments and so forth. And we did not um, enjoy ourselves then doing anything but going to class. And of course, at night, there would be something else, depending on the age of the individual too. 
But as I said, I was a released veteran, so certainly making a companionship with a sorority at the time wasn't wrong at all. So I attended uh, classes, enjoyed them all too. I had Coleman and Seymour and Blair and a uh, great many of them. And I found Seymour and Coleman were my favorites too, especially Coleman. He was a absolute perfect professor as far as I was concerned then. His, all of his uh, presentations were just uh, uh, tremendous. And if I could copy my behavior then similar to his, I would have sure done so. In fact, the library, the university library was there in Old Main at the time on the first floor. I think there's something like uh, 2,500 books in uh, Old Main at the time located on the first floor and they were going to build a new library. So just as soon as they got started with construction, the students were asked then to go down to the first floor and pick up some books and take them over to a, a building then, a temporary building. And so we had to do that too, but that was no problem at all. But it was part of the assignment then. And then again, we spent all of our time during the day in classes in this single building then and uh, uh, socially, we didn't have very much money. My income was approximately $90 a month. And when I started uh, as a student then, I had to rent a place and that was $15 a month. For most of the uh, students, the male students, the first two weeks then, you would spend most of your money, and so the next two weeks were kind of slow and you wouldn't be able to see the sorority girls or anything like that. Well, Harry Reid and I were the editors of the Eastern News at the time. And every year, the queen would be elected or selected, and then there would be a dance. And as the editors of the paper, we'd have to make a decision on one or the other would have to dance with the queen. So we flipped a coin and I lost. So I had to dance with the queen. Years later, after I graduated from Eastern, I started teaching Charleston High School, Kankakee, and then Oak Lawn, and, and finally came back to Eastern and remained here until retirement, whenever that started years ago. Well, my whole life has been surrounded with people who have been associated with Eastern too. And my wife, my family, my son, my grandson, and so forth. And so it's, it's been home for me. I'll start with football, because I think with, with Eastern, football kind of is top of mind for a lot of people. Um, and to me, the most amazing Eastern athletic story is the 1978 football team. They had gone one and ten the previous year, 1977. Uh, football was probably at kind of an all-time low at a place that had not had hardly any football success in the previous 30 years. And Darrell Mudra came in as the coach and literally turned the program completely around, went from one and ten in 1977 to the Division II national champions in 1978, and really kind of started what has become a very strong tradition of football at Eastern. Eastern's had on and off quite a bit of basketball success at different times in the past. Uh, late 40s, early 50s, they had a lot of success. Went to the NAIA tournament, had a long, long winning streak in the old Lance Gym, which is now McAfee Gym. Uh, in the late 70s, Don Eddy is the coach. In 76 and 78, the team went to the Division II Final Four twice. But um, after the move up to Division I basketball in 1981, the real success came kind of a little bit out of the blue twice. Um, the first in 1992 with Rick Samuels as the head coach, a team that had pretty good expectations at the start of the year, kind of a disappointing regular season, and then kind of caught fire in the postseason tournament, won the Mid-Continent Tournament, went to the 1992 NCAA Tournament, first time in school history, lost to Indiana in the first round, a team that ended up in the Final Four that year. 
And then in 2001, Eastern had maybe its best basketball team ever as far as uh, just quality of play. Had two of the top five scorers in the country that year with Kyle Hill and Henry Domerkamp. Had a very good season, went into the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament, seated second, got way behind in the championship game against Austin P, and made a miraculous comeback from 20 points down in the final eight minutes to win the game and go to the NCAA Tournament for the second time in school history. And again, lost in the first round to a team that went to the Final Four that year, which was Arizona. Women's basketball obviously didn't really get started until the late 70s, and the, the best success um, was probably, the single best team was probably the 1988 team uh, coached by Bobby Hilke, a very good team, finished I think second in the Gateway Conference that year, made it to the championship game of the Gateway Conference Tournament, and a lot like the 2001 men's team, got way behind in the championship game against Illinois State, and again came from about 20 points down in the last 10 minutes to win the game at Illinois State, win the Conference Tournament Championship. That's the one and only women's NCAA Tournament team at Eastern and then got a chance to host an NCAA tournament uh, game because they were chosen to play Colorado. Colorado had a conflict in their facility, couldn't host the game, and so the game was here at Eastern, which was kind of a cool deal. Colorado won the game, but certainly a memory for fans here in Charleston. Maybe the, the most amazing Eastern athletic accomplishment, though, is one that I don't think a lot of people know about and I don't know a lot about, but Eastern made the move up to Division I in 1981, and the very first year, the soccer team got to the NCAA Final Four. Now, that's uh, just an incredible accomplishment and uh, probably one that's overlooked and uh, too much forgotten here in Charleston. But uh, to get your soccer team at a school the size of this, third in the nation in uh, 1981, tremendous accomplishment. One more Eastern team that would be very memorable in, in recent memory, just about everybody would remember the 2013 football team. Uh, Dino Babers was the head coach, Jimmy Garoppolo was the quarterback. Uh, team went 11-1 in the regular season, ended up second in the country, pulled a big upset at San Diego State. Tremendous offensive machine, averaged over 40 points a game. Not only won the Ohio Valley Championship and won every game in the conference, they were never behind in a single game at any time in conference games and that nobody will ever do better than that. Um, got to the quarterfinals of the uh, FCS playoffs that year. Got beat in the snow by Towson State in a real disappointing night here in Charleston, but made an awful lot of memories and just tremendous fun with the, uh, the style that team played and having uh, you know Jimmy as the quarterback and all the success that that team had. My father introduced me to, to uh, music at a young age, and I fell in love with it and have been a musician ever since. My musical journey started in the fourth grade, but in the fourth grade I got started and played all through high school. I joined the Eastern Campus in September of 1964 after graduating from Lincoln High School in East St. Louis, Illinois, and I uh, spent four years here. Dr. Westcott, Dr. Boyd, uh, we had Pete Vavona who was the, the jazz band director at that time. I became a music major and uh, really enjoyed myself during that four year period of time. I was part of the marching band, I was part of the men's glee club, I became a member of the concert band, the symphonic wind ensemble, played in the symphony orchestra once, one year I believe, and the jazz band. So I, I was a member of a number of different musical organizations. So. I had a pretty varied experience here at EIU. EIU prepared me for just about everything that I needed to do musically in life, and uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. After graduating from EIU, I uh, got married that summer. My wife and I came back to EIU. I finished a master's that year, and my wife went on to get her degree. We went back to East St. Louis and began our life together. 50 years ago, in 64, EIU was a lot smaller than it is right now, but it had a good group of uh, instructors and I think they, they provided me the foundation that I needed to do the things that were presented to me later on in life. As a matter of fact, the reason that I'm here is a, a fellow Phi Mu Alpha Sinfonian. His name is Warren Sperry. Uh, I talked to him, told him I was going to be here for the, for the homecoming and I, I, I spoke with him. I said, man, uh, are you going to be around? I want to, I want to come by and see you. I'd like for us to get together. He said, well, no, I'm not going to be there. I, but he said that uh, the people had asked him to direct the uh, Star Spangled Banner and that he wouldn't be able to do it. And he said, hey, I got a great idea. You do it. <laughs> and I said, you, you mean direct the, the, the uh, national anthem? He said, yeah. I said, well, if you can get it set up, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. 
And here I'm getting ready to do it on Saturday. And I just thought it would be a good idea to come back. I didn't know I was going to get to direct the band, but that's just icing on the cake, me getting to direct the band while I'm here. Basically, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. I graduated from high school in 1967. Back then, in my neighborhood at least, women really didn't go to college, at least in my neighborhood. And so college was never really stressed. No one even talked about college. But I knew there was probably more to life. Some company offered a scholarship if you wrote a paper on being a teacher. And I thought I'll give it a try. I got the scholarship and that's what led me to Eastern Illinois University. I knew nobody, absolutely nobody. So my parents were with me. We got to the room. All I knew is my roommate's name was Marsha. I had never even met her. And I walked in the room and Marsha had already been there. And so she had her clothes hanging in the closet and her shoes all lined up on the floor. And I took one look and I thought, I can't do this. I don't know her. I know no one on campus. All my friends were back in Chicago. I had a boyfriend back, at, back home. It was what I was familiar with. And I was terrified. I was really scared. But my brother called me and he said, Nancy, give it one quarter. That's all, one quarter and then you can decide. And that was it. I never went back home to live again, to visit, but never to live again because Eastern was so welcoming and so friendly and so helpful that I stayed. Uh, Marsha and I, we ended up being roommates for three years. So being with her and that, that was a great match, a tremendous match. Uh, the floor, uh, your first floor, you do a lot of activities together. So it was very friendly, very exciting. My senior year, I was one of the founding members of a sorority uh, called Alpha Omicron Pi, AO Pi. And my senior year, uh, they nominated me and I ran for homecoming queen. So I became an L Ed teacher and I taught for about 13 years. And I have to tell you, that's all because of Eastern. When I went to Eastern, I went there because I had the scholarship and it was only through them, their direction, their counseling, their, their guidance on talking to me about what I wanted and where I wanted to go in my life. Not where they thought I should go, but where I wanted to go. And it was only through them that I entered into the world of teaching. Life gets in the way. So for 45 years, I didn't go back. And on LinkedIn, I saw someone post something from Eastern Illinois University. And I was, wow, there's a blast to the past. And when I answered it, all of a sudden, I, I'm telling you by the end of the day, I'm getting emails from people at Eastern welcoming me to what, I'm not even sure what. They were welcoming me, you know, saying thank you for reaching out to us. We're, we're thrilled that, to hear from you. We'd love to hear your stories about Eastern. There was a flood of memories that came back. Memories that I had really forgotten about. It was 40, five years and all of a sudden I'm remembering things like the Greek races that the fraternity houses had. I remembered walking down campus. I remembered all of the friends and the, fam the, the, the friendly faces and, and it was such a flood of memories. I just really loved it. And then going back to Eastern, when I tell people my story of how I was treated, how my husband and I were treated when we came back to Eastern, every single one says, my college didn't do that. My university never welcomed me that way. Back in the day, there was a program called Queen for a Day. That's how Eastern made me feel. And the warmth and the friendliness, along with the actual education that you get there, well, it's beyond anything I've ever experienced before. hope that you've been enjoying watching EIU. This is who we are.
We are so many different things, and we've got 26 <laughs> stories to share with you tonight. We're through a majority of the program, but we need several people to call right now. Mm -hmm. The phones are available, so who's going to be first? Yes, we need somebody to get on that phone right now and say, you know what, I believe in what WEIU is doing. We love Eastern Illinois University, and the way that you appreciate that is you give us a call right now. If you'd like a DVD, it's $75 mm -hmm. gift to WEIU. Two or more are 60 each. We need the phone to ring right now. We do, and when you give that gift, it's tax deductible, mm -hmm. so keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So if you bleed blue, show us some green. And I am joined by my granddaughter, Lola. And Lola, what should people do? Call right now. Call right now. Oh, look at that. Say it again. Say it again. Call right now. Yeah. <laughs> Keep those phones ringing. That's what we want. You know, the one thing about WEIU working here on the campus of Eastern is we are so fortunate to be on a college mm -hmm. campus. Not only do we learn a lot, we have so many students that come through our doors all the time and we see them grow. They start as a freshman and we have several student workers. They start as a freshman and now, you know, before you know it, they've graduated and they've done well here at Eastern. So we really mm -hmm. appreciate the students here. We had, there's one right there. Yeah. There's Emma. She's yeah. on the Newswatch crew. Yeah. News watch. Yes, we've got lots of students in the studio with us tonight. I'm going to talk to Scott mm -hmm. in just a minute about that. But we heard some great stories this mm -hmm. last segment. Down the Fine Arts Center, the News Watch. Um, Bob Sterling, what a great story. Oh, yes, that's good. Um, sports teams. So oh. we've got lots of challenges out there tonight. We've mm -hmm. got challenges for the Greek Live, mm -hmm. the sports teams. If you've been a part of Student Service mm -hmm. Day, uh, the Daily Eastern News. Hey, if you were part of News Watch, <laughs> or hit mix. Yes. You give us a call. Right. When I was in the, uh, just a few minutes ago when we were watching the sport teams, I saw Jimmy Garoppolo come across the screen. And I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be mm -hmm. cool if he called tonight? So if you know Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> I want you cool. to get on that phone right now and you call him and you say, you know what? I just saw you on TV mm -hmm. and you were playing at Eastern Illinois University. Yeah, that's where he got his start. So hey, if you were part of that team, if mm -hmm. you love sports, if you love the Panthers, you call us tonight, get a copy of the DVD. We don't want these phones silent we no. want to get the energy in the house when you call you boost us mm -hmm. you let us know that this show matters so don't let these people sit back here even <laughs> well, you know what they want to answer we've yes. got so many people here call right now what are they supposed to do call right now there you go <laughs> <laughs> the phone number's on the bottom of your screen. And like we said before, if you'd like to give a gift of $75, we'd love to send you a DVD of the program you're watching tonight. Anything, any, any more than two, you're there $60 a piece. Let's get the phone ringing. It's so great mm -hmm. to get a phone blitz. And what is a phone blitz? A phone blitz <laughs> is when we have every single phone operator mm -hmm. busy. And we need that. We right. need your energy right now. We need you to call right now again. It's $75 for one. Thank you very much. $60 for two or more. That's right. And that's what we want to hear. We want to hear those phones ringing. Hey, I've got a special guest in the studio right now. This is Dr. Scott Wallace. And I want to thank you for coming here tonight because you brought some people in the studio, didn't you? Absolutely, Kian. Uh, I'm actually the director of the television and video production BA here. And everyone behind camera, the technical director, and so many crew members tonight are actually television and video production majors. Uh, they gain an invaluable experience here. And it's so many different productions that you don't see. You see live television, truly live broadcasting here at WEIU in Charleston. Uh, it's Newswatch, obviously the Emmy Award winning show. So many great talk shows that are during the day. We even shoot a sketch comedy show about 30 feet in that direction. And anything that you could possibly give that would help that going, help students get their hands on equipment and help keep us broadcasting and making these great productions would be sincerely appreciated. And uh, I'll, I'll talk to you, you know, I'll, I'll just sit here kind of like sad, like I'm waiting <laughs> for somebody to call me for a date uh, until that <laughs> happens. But uh, get those phones ringing. Yeah, stuff looks good. And if it's shot well and you see everything, well, that's some of our students. Yeah, and that's what we do. We give experiences to students. We are helping them build their broadcast careers, production careers, you name it, those phones ringing, make that happen. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Kim. Hey! Over to you. Uh, I'd like to give a couple of thank yous. Terry from Chrisman, thank you so much for calling tonight and your support of EIU. This is who we are. Jill from Charleston called, and Jill was one of our storytellers, so we appreciate it. And Jill, when you called, you were talking to my niece, Blythe, who is an alumni here at Eastern. So right now, we do have a couple people on the phone, but we truly need you to call. We talked earlier about why did we do a program on Eastern? The reason is, is because probably no one else would. We feel very blessed.
blessed that we were able to capture the history of Eastern, what's going on now, and really brag on how great the, that our community is in here and the people that uh, attend Eastern and, and give back to Eastern. We really appreciate that. So right now, we really need you to call. One DVD is 75. If you'd like two or more, there's 60 each. So we would love to have you call right now. When you call and that phone rings, mm -hmm. we get really, really pumped up. And right now, we need you to call. So if you've been watching all night and you've learned something about Eastern that you didn't know, that's the reason we did the program. Mm -hmm. That's why we need you to call. You know, we know this university matters to a lot of people <laughs> just because of Edgar Matthews' story in the last sure. segment. He came back after 50 <laughs> years, and he directed mm -hmm. the national anthem at the homecoming game, and he did that because EIU matters. Right. WEIU mm -hmm. matters. All of this matters, and you have to reach deep into your heart tonight. Think about the memories. Think about the people that you have met, the experiences just because you attended Eastern mm -hmm. Illinois University, and give back. That's what we're asking you to do. That's very good. And, you know, Nancy was one of our storytellers, mm -hmm. too, talking about, you know, she got a, just got on uh, some LinkedIn, LinkedIn or something, and she uh, connected with an East, the Eastern Development Office, and they made contact mm -hmm. with her. And she's like, I haven't even thought of Eastern for I don't know how many years. And she was so excited to be able to tell her story. Everybody has a story to tell, and Nancy now is connected with her mm -hmm. uh, school again. So it's really exciting to know that Eastern is reaching out to our alums, and we want you to reach out tonight and show your love to us for doing a program like this. I got an email from Nancy just a little bit ago. Thank you. And she said she was sorry she couldn't be here tonight. Uh, she was here last week for the premiere. but. Um, she wants to support WEIU. Mm -hmm. She's giving to get a copy of the DVD, and she thanked us and thanked us for the opportunity. So thank you, Nancy, for your support. That's great. I want to give a shout out to Jeff from Charleston. Mm -hmm. Jeff, we know who you are. Yes, we and do. I and I love thank that you, you called. He's a great supporter of WEIU TV, great friend of the station, and a great mm -hmm. friend of uh, my family. So we really appreciate yes, that. And used to be a part of WEIU as well, and you still are because mm -hmm. you're becoming a member again tonight. Right. Thank you. Uh, David from Springfield, and David worked at EIU, so thank Good. you, David, for calling and showing your support as well. So we've got an alum. If you're an alum right now, we want you to call the phone. We want to get the phones going because yes. that is such fun for us here in the studio. We have so many students in here right now, mm -hmm. which is real exciting to have them here. And if you see somebody answering the phone that you might know, Blythe's back there, Sally's there. Who else we got? Arlene, Emma. Emma. Scott. And Scott, we okay. need you to call. The phone number's at the bottom of your screen. Don't wait. We need you to call right now. If you love this program, we love to doing it. And, you know, it makes us feel like, wow, people really do enjoy watching the program when you give us a call. We've got more stories coming up in the next segment. We have a story on Pemberton Hall. And Matt was talking about the history of EIU Radio. Mm -hmm. You'll get to hear that. That's a good one. Uh, Booth Library. Lots of people uh, have been in Booth Library and still go today. And, and can we talk a little bit just about Booth Library? Yeah, let's if, do. If you haven't been on campus and you haven't actually gone into Booth mm -hmm. Library, you need to make a trip to go to the library. It is absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. And you might see Arlene while you're in there. And we have a story from Gretchen Brandt, mm -hmm. and then we also hear from uh, Josh Norman about EIU Today and where it's going tomorrow. Yeah. And you know what? We are so proud to be a part of Eastern mm -hmm. Illinois University, and great things are happening here. And we're getting more students here, and it's just refreshing to know that Eastern is doing well. Once again, we want to mention that there is a Facebook group out there called EIU. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. And if you go to the WEIU TV Public Broadcasting Station Facebook page, join the group, and you can extend the stories that we're sharing tonight. Share your stories of how you attended EIU, if you worked here, um, if you had family members here, um, where it led to, and just the graduation dates, the um, groups that you were affiliated with. We want to hear from you because we want these stories to live on. Mm -hmm. Continue telling who EIU is after tonight. Stories are so important to tell and we know that everybody has mm -hmm. a story. We all start with a story. We all start we? with a story. So if you want to support WEIU who shares these stories through our storytellers, we want you to call right now. Please mm -hmm. give us a call. The number's on the bottom of your screen. We've got Sally on the phone back there, but we've got lots of operators standing by mm -hmm. and we're not giving up on you. No. We know this matters. We just need you to stop sitting there letting that phone sit there right beside you pick it up and say you know what I do want a copy of that DVD and I also want one for somebody else that I know 
Um, Tim from Charleston, thank you for calling in, Tim. We appreciate your support. Absolutely. You know, when, when that phone rings, it makes us go, wow, people really enjoy the program. So we know that you are watching. We know that you can call right now if you're able to. We do, so give us a call. Lots of people are standing by once again. Bleed Blue with us tonight. Woo -hoo -hoo. We've got more stories coming your way. Don't go anywhere. Keep calling once the stories start. But anyway, this is what? EIU. This, this is, is who, who we are. are. Yay! When Lemus and Lord, the first uh, EIU president, came uh, to Charleston to take over this responsibility, he said, where's the residential component? Because he'd come from the University of Minnesota, where he had that, and he knew that was important. And he talked to the Board of Trustees about it and convinced them it was a good idea. So they forwarded that request to the uh, state legislature. He went over, presented the idea, and basically got laughed at. He said, what are you going to want next, a, a lunch counter? You know, because they thought, that was ludicrous. He said, they said, we just don't do that in the state of Illinois. Well, he was obviously kind of taken aback by that, but he said, okay, how am I going to get this passed? And what he did in the second round in 1903, he connected with Stanton Pemberton, who uh, was a senator from Oakland, um, and he said, let's figure this out. In fact, Livingston Lord said, we have to do more than just educate them within the classroom. We have to make sure they develop the social graces that will be a major part of the position that they hold in their communities as educators. He was, from the very beginning, understanding the reality of not only the in-room and in-classroom education, but also what goes on outside the classroom. And in 1937, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was crisscrossing the country visiting the CCC camps uh, that her husband had put in place by the New Deal. And in Charleston, there were three of them. And that evening, she came to Pemberton, and she stood in front of the fireplace and talked to the residents assembled about how lucky they were to have this opportunity to go to school. We had a reunion, a 100-year anniversary of the building. And we had a woman who was there, and she spoke about the most impactful uh, thing of her college experience living in Pemberton Hall was sitting there listening to Eleanor Roosevelt, the first lady of the United States in Charleston, Illinois, sitting in the formal lounge of Pemberton, telling them, uh, giving them life advice. The building is still a women's residence hall. In 1963, an addition was built uh, to add another 100 beds, so there's 200 beds in that building. Um, and the Cracker Box Gym, which was originally built, uh, is now the home of the Honors College. Um, and, and the building has uh, had some uh, renovations done to it, but done in a way that honors the historical significance of the building. And in fact, when you walk into it, you get the feel of, of uh, that 1909 opening uh, and what that felt like. Why this is an important story is because of the role that Eastern played in uh, the shaping of higher education in the state. Even though University of Illinois and Illinois State were universities 27 years before Eastern was, they didn't have a residential component that was part of the campus. Uh, as Livingston Lord said, um, you know, we're going to fight the fight for the state. Uh, but what was once a very unpopular idea will become popular indeed um, as they will line up uh, to have their opportunity to become residential. And they did indeed because it did uh, so much uh, enhance the education, not only just the um, uh, classroom experience, but also the out-of-classroom experience. The history of broadcasting at Eastern Illinois University starts at a grain elevator in Tuscola, Illinois. So we go back to 1932 the university wanting to get their message out and it's a tiny place. The university only exists in what we know as the old main quad back to the student services building and how does Eastern try to get its word out? Well, they get into partnership with the James Bush Grain Elevator Company of Tuscola and that company got a license to start a radio station that we know today as WDZ. So Eastern gets into a partnership with WDZ in Tuscola 
and produces the Eastern Hour. And that program actually runs into the late 1940s. Early 60s come around, we know what comes in the early 60s, the rock and roll revolution. A group of students decide they want to hear their music and they want to hear their music where they're living. So they decide to go to their popular mechanics magazine and build their own radio transmitter early 1964, January, February, from uh, what became the lecture rooms in Booth Library, you have the birth of WELH, which people called East Lincoln Hall or uh, Eastern at Lincoln Hall, because that's where it originated. As the university grows, the audience of WELH grows with it. And again, it's all student driven and the plan was made to put radio and television in some classroom form in the second edition of Coleman. So as that building becomes complete now, ELH has their own home. They don't have to squeeze into a converted closet in the basement of Booth Library. But it was, you know, a um, interesting group across the board of personalities. Uh, you know, a philosophy major, a chemistry major, uh, history major, uh, education. Uh, if you were a youngster, you either got an early graveyard shift or you were in till midnight, two in the morning, spinning the records. I had one of those graveyard shifts. Mostly it was, it was six o'clock on a Saturday morning, which kind of put a crimp in your social life. But well, you were alone and you were talking to yourself for three hours, among other things. Uh, in my first year during an ice storm, uh, on campus, I got a call from somebody who purported to be from the vice president's office and campus was closed because of the weather. And I closed campus. And then the phone really started ringing and it was the vice president's office asking me what exactly I had done. I think one of the great values of WELH, what we did, what we built at a small university was I made some lifelong friends. There were a core group myself, four others who were all heavily into the station. We all graduated within six months of each other and we began a tradition of meeting every year. We actually formed a last man's club and so in a safety deposit box of the People's National Bank of Kiwani sits a bottle of bourbon. When there's two of us left, we're to open the bottle and toast not only our lasting friendship for all these years, but the memory of Eastern's broadcasting efforts and that what was once WELH moved along to WEIU with our efforts as part of that. Eastern Illinois University was established in 1895. Uh, it took three or four years to build the building and get the programs, hire the faculty, etc. So uh, by 1899, the library was established in Old Main. We have the letter from President Lord asking a company in Chicago to send us, I'm getting the numbers wrong, but it's four tables, 16 chairs, uh, four other desks, and also could you send us a librarian? And from that letter, uh, a person named Florence Beck was hired. And she stayed for four years. She was a very young librarian. And uh, she was replaced by Miss Mary Josephine Booth, who proceeded to stay for over 40 years. So she's a, she's a wonderful figure and sort of laid the foundation for uh, great library services. And, th and that continued through uh, several other directors. I think we've only had six directors in the 115, 18 years. As time passed, uh, Miss Booth continually requested additional space. And we finally got approval to build a freestanding library on Eastern's campus. Uh, but what happened was the Second World War. The building was uh, started in 1948 
and the services opened in 1950. She had retired just a few years earlier than that, but the um, campus named the building for her and she got to cut the ribbon on the opening day. And as you walk in today's north entrance, it's exactly as it was when it was opened. University Gothic style of the 1950s building is wonderful to come in and just look up. I always say, look up. <laughs> That's where you'll find the ears of corn <laughs> in stone in the uh, lobby of the building. And as you come into the foyer, it gets even larger and you have the um, bacon quote uh, on the wall with the ship. and. Uh, it's a wonderful experience and people of all ages enjoy coming into that room. The 1950s section was added on to in 1968 with two times the amount of space and then in 2002 we opened the south entrance and in the 2002 renovation we were able to bring aspects from the original gem of a library throughout the building that was not done in 1968. Well, Booth Library is a very important part of university life at Eastern Illinois University, and it's also an important part of the uh, life and culture of the East Central Illinois area. So in 2007, 2008, we were discussing um, scholarships and how one can start one. And we decide, I decided at that point that I and my late husband, Pete Taylor, would start a scholarship for student teachers because there was no such thing. There were no way for student teachers to get funds for new tires or new clothes. So I basically crowdsourced the scholarship fund before crowdsourcing was a thing. Um, so put down some money and then invited family, friends, people from the Charleston community. So in not too long of a time, in fact I believe that it was one of the fastest growing scholarships and got met very quickly. So that started the bug for me, that scholarship, forming scholarships, you didn't need to have big deep pockets and huge checkbooks that anybody with the drive and the desire to do that could do that. So it was in 2014, January. Um, I was sitting at my kitchen table with a graduate student, Kate Henry, and she was doing part of her graduate work on a big presentation on Dr. Earl Boyd. Dr. Earl Boyd started the band program at EIU. He wrote our fight song. He was one of these people that was very, very well known nationwide in the 60s for all he did for band. And the important thing about the band program, and I think Dr. Boyd saw this too, was that you don't have to be a music major to be part of the music department at EIU. There are many non-majors who have played in the concert band, who have played in the wind symphony, certainly who have marched. I mean, that's a, there's all sorts of people that march in the marching band that aren't our business majors, journalism majors, marketing majors. But that's the one thing that many of them bring from high school and they bring it together. And that's what Dr. Boyd showed the nation, really what a good solid band program could be. So Randy's like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's name it the Dr. Earl Boyd Scholarship. So the scholarship was kicked off in 2014. We've raised enough for two full scholarships at this point. Um, our goal was to have enough for four, but we're halfway there and that's only been since 2014. What I can say to everyone who went to Eastern or has any part of Eastern is that we can all help the future students and the students that are here by giving $5 to the foundation fundraiser. By, I've told people this weekend is homecoming and it's a perfect time because so many people come back from fraternities or like the journalism department has a big chili cook-off every year. And I've told those people, get your group of people together and decide 
we're going to start a scholarship and start there and then take it out to other people you know. Ask your friends, your neighbors. Don't give me a birthday present. Write a check to EIU. We really do have something unique here. Uh, and that is a culture committed to student success and individual attention. Uh, when I think about our faculty to student ratio, just don't get that in public higher education. Uh, what you see here, that attention to the individual, you know, those class sizes that are around 20 students, it's just incredible. And so to see that message hit the marketplace was just, it was fantastic. Um, and just to be a part of that process of bringing those advocates, our alum, our current students, to come in and just tell their stories. It's so authentic because it's not, it's who we aspire to be and who we are at the same time. So that just, that marketing piece was just so amazing and just the campus unity and commitment to the mission of bringing students to this campus that are the right fit, who can succeed, um, who need that caring support, you know, while also benefiting from the academic rigor, rigor that we're known for. The outcome of that, um, you know, this past year for fall 18, um, we had a 24.5 percent increase in our incoming class. So it was just awesome to see that come to fruition, but more than that, just to look back on that past year and think about all those things that were accomplished, and that's moving to a structure and a student composition that maximizes our student success. That's the vision of our administration. Let's get to a place where fiscally we're where we need to be, but more importantly, we have the number of students on this campus that where we can serve every single student to our maximum capacity. Every single student gets a level of support and resources that they need in order to not just succeed, but we want to be a place that generates world changers that are going out and they're changing their industry, uh, they're, they're changing, uh, they're meeting needs, they're, they're going out and they're making a difference. And so really as we envision the future of this institution, you know, it's an institution that has a number of students that our infrastructure is capable of meeting those needs on a mass level and on an individual level, uh, all for the goal of seeing those students succeed. And welcome back. We are so happy that you've joined us tonight. We've had a really good time. Oh, we've had a blast tonight. <laughs> Everybody here in the studio, the students, the storytellers, mm -hmm. the friends of ours yeah. that have been here, we've had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We hope that you watching all of you watching have had a good time too. We know a lot of people have been watching because we've gotten some thank yous that we got a shout out here. I've got Joyce from Georgetown. And Alan from Charleston. He's the former former dean of Booth Library. And we, there was a story yeah. that he told. So thank you, Alan, for calling in. We truly appreciate that. And speaking of storytellers, I have Edgar Matthews from Maryland. He called in. And I emailed him twice this week and told him about the streaming where he could watch. So, Edgar, I hope you're watching, and thank you so much for being a part of this story, and it was a pleasure meeting you. Mm -hmm. we, this is our last break, mm -hmm. so if you're out there and you've watched all evening and, and you, you, know, you loved watching but you didn't call, this is your last opportunity tonight to give us a call. Mm -hmm. If the phone number's at the bottom of your screen, please call for a gift to WEIU of $75. We'd love to send you a DVD. Maybe you want two or more, and they would be $60 each. We have six phone operators just waiting for you to call right now. We are also offering these online, so if you don't call in tonight, you can always go online at weiu.net, click on Donate Now, select how many DVDs you want, and we'll ship them straight to you. The phones are really quiet right now, and that to us means, you know, it's kind of sad that you're not calling. But we do know that you've enjoyed the program, so please call right now. We'd really appreciate and we'd even give you a shout out on the air. But um, we hope you've enjoyed watching the program. We have been honored to be able to produce this program. Mm -hmm. We've met so many wonderful people, so many alumni, mm -hmm. stories teaching you about EIU. That's what we do here. It's an mm -hmm. educational institution. We're happy to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. We want to thank EIU. We want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. We are extending the stories once again on the Facebook page, WEIU TV Public Broadcasting Station, Facebook, 
There's a group called EIU, This Is Who We Are. We want you to join and continue to extend those stories. Yes, we do. You know, there's a lot of, everybody <laughs> has their own story to tell. There's Arlene, boy, she's got some stories. Tell you what, Pat, Matt Pye does too, I know he does. <laughs> but uh, we truly appreciate you calling tonight. We're not going to keep on, you know, talking because, you know, there's no phone calls. But you know what? You can still call. The number's on the bottom of your screen. Screen, And we thank you so much for being a part of our family tonight and from our family to yours. We hope yes. you have a good night. We thank you for calling in for all of those who become members of WEIU. You're now part of us. EIU, this is who we are. Thanks for watching. Bye. Have a good night. We need it. EIU, This Is Who We Are, is brought to you in part by The Eastern Illinois University Alumni Association is dedicated to serving the needs of our graduates while providing support to the university. The Eastern Illinois University Alumni Association is proud to support Eastern Illinois University, This Is Who We Are. Eastern Illinois University, This Is Who We Are, was made in part from a grant from the Charleston Area Charitable Foundation. At First Mid, we strive to fulfill the financial needs of our communities with personal service, professionalism, and integrity. Headquartered in Mattoon and dedicated to the needs of our customers, First Mid is proud to sponsor Eastern Illinois University. This is who we are. Sarah Bush Lincoln congratulates the storytellers and the EIU champions on their dedication to Eastern Illinois University. Proud to be a part of EIU, this is who we are. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care. Additional funding was provided by Monahan Partners of Arcola, City of Mattoon Tourism, Ross and Cindy McCullough, and former Illinois Governor Jim Edgar. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency. My heart keeps going back to Nashville. Hi, Ray Stevens here inviting you to join me and the legendary blues man Sam Moore right here on Ray Stevens Cabaret Nashville. Mama, Mama.